What's up Chaos Shinobi here? Summary, Naruto is ignored and neglected by his family and in an accident he unlocks the powers of the Otsutsuki and becomes the god of ten paths. Chapter 1, Kushina Uzumaki watched her daughter practicing with shurikens. Kushina was a very beautiful woman. She had a slender but feminine build, fair skin and violet eyes. Her most concerning feature was a thick head of flaming red hair that she had passed down to her daughter Natsumi. Natsumi's bright blue eyes fixed on the target. She had slipped one of the two shurikens in each of her hands into throwing position. The razor-sharp shuriken flicked with Natsumi's hands sailed the short distance to the training dummy. One of the points penetrated the center. Mommy! Daddy! The six-years-old girl shouted, bouncing up and down on her feet. Did you see? Did you see what I did? Yes, that was really great. Kushina smiled. She bent down and kissed her little girl on the forehead. Natsumi smiled. She then felt a gentle hand on top of her head. She looked up and saw the smiling face of her father Minato Namikaze. Her smile got even bigger. I proud of you, my little princess, Minato said, smiling brightly as he ruffled Natsumi's hair. Minato was a tall man. He had fair skin and spiky blonde hair. He has bright blue eyes the same as his daughter Natsumi. Trust me. You'll be a great shinobi like your dad in no time, he said to his daughter. Dad, my dream is to become the greatest Hokage. One day, I'm gonna surpass you in all previous Hokage. Natsumi pumped his fist in the air smiling brightly. A large grin appeared on Kushina's face. She turned as she pointed a finger at her husband. See, Minato. She's gonna be like her mommy. Kushina gently put a hand on Natsumi's daughter and then she knelt at her side. To be the first female Hokage was my dream. The dream that your father stole away from me. She shot a glare at her husband. Minato chuckled nervously. She still scares me even though it's been so many years. But I'm sure, you'll achieve that dream for me. Kushina smiled while looking at her daughter. Natsumi Uzumaki, the fifth Okage has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Kushina wrapped her arms around her daughter's small frame and hugged her. Minato smiled at the scene and joined the three-way hug between his family members. Smiling both parents held their precocious daughter close. Big teary violent eyes watched the scene as it unfolded before the clear innocence eyes stained with tears. Naruto Uzumaki, twin brother of Natsumi, was a carbon copy of their father with the exception of some features. Tears slipped down his cheeks and he looked away. Sometimes when his parents were so attentive to his twin sister they would just forget about him. He had been hoping this day would be the day they would finally acknowledge his existence, but, all he ever wanted was their parents' acknowledgement. Their approval. Their acceptance. What's so special about her? The blonde boy thought. Naruto absolutely resented his twin. She had gotten everything handed to her on a silver platter. He, on the other hand, had worked very to get every small thing. If it was enough, Natsumi was everyone's favorite. They called her the hero of the hidden leaf. How did she become hero? Naruto had no idea. As far back as he could remember, she hadn't done any heroic deed. He also had nicknames. They called him the son of the fourth Hokage and hero's brother. Naruto clenched his fist as he absolutely hated those titles. He didn't want live in the shadow of famous his twin and even more famous parents. Naruto. Naruto. Naruto's musing cut short when he heard Minato call his name. Naruto, come here. Yes, Naruto replied as he approached his family. Naruto, I want you to fight with your sister, Minato said. Naruto nodded his head as he saw a good opportunity to show his parents that he was worthy of their time and love. Good. Minato turned to his daughter. Now Natsumi, you're going to fight with him, but do not forget to take it easy on him. It's not a real battle, just a spar and your brother isn't strong as you. Naruto clenched his fist in anger. He wanted to scream at father that it was their fault as they never trained him. I'll show them I'm not weak, then maybe they'll love me like they do Natsumi. Kushina had a shocked look on her face. She couldn't believe what her husband had suggested. We haven't started his training yet. She shook her head and quickly brushed her worry aside. What am I thinking? It's a simple spar between two children. Nothing will go wrong. Naruto settled down into the fighting stance that he had been learning from books. Natsumi took her own fighting stance that her parents had taught her. As soon as Minato gave a signal, Naruto made the first move. Naruto ran toward Natsumi to punch her, but Natsumi simply moved away from his way and slammed him against the ground. Naruto quickly pushed himself on all fours and kicked his left leg behind him. A huff told him that he had hit the target. Naruto jumped to his feet and noticed that his sister had already recovered from his attack. Natsumi attacked her brother, throwing some fast punches that Naruto either blocked or dodged. She never stopped. Naruto blocked his sister some punches and sent three back and a knee to her gut that forced her to her knees. Using this opportunity, he kicked her as hard as he could, 
sending her rolling a few meters from her previous spot. Naruto's face split into a wide smile as he stared up at Natsumi fallen form. I did it. I finally beat her. It was the first step to get close to his parents. Naruto turned toward his parents for their approval and the smile left his face. Minato and Kushina weren't looking at him but behind him. He turned his attention toward Natsumi and froze. His sister was blazing with an evil red chakra. Naruto felt his body shivering in fear as he could sense the power that Natsumi possessed. It was vast and filled with bloodlust. Natsumi roared like a wild animal and disappeared. Naruto then felt a sharp pain in the jaw. Before he could defend himself, Natsumi slashed him on his chest with her razor-sharp claws, leaving a deep wound there. She slashed once again with her other hand on his face. Naruto cried in pain as he felt burning sensation in areas where wounds were. His entire body felt drained. He barely had the strength to defend. However, the fight was far from over. Minato and Kushina didn't realize what their daughter was planning until it was too late to stop. Natsumi had already crossed the distance and was gathering a large amount of corrupted red chakra in her palm. She delivered a palm strike to her brother's head, which sent him flying backwards into a tree. Naruto barely had the strength to keep awake. All he could feel was a pain, especially from his chest as he laid on the blood-soaked ground. He was conscious, so he could hear his parents calling his sister's name. He saw some blurry images of his parents disappearing with his unconscious sister. Minato and Kushina had forgotten about him once again. He felt betrayed and that made the pain even worse. At last, I am not special. But I don't want to die, no. Not like this, I don't want to die like a nobody, Naruto thought before darkness took over his eyes. Oh, Minato and Kushina were in the hospital as they stood in the hallway. Medical ninja team was examining their children. That incidence had really shaken up them, as they hadn't expected a simple spar between children would end up in the hospital. The sound of a click caught their attention. The door opened to reveal the head medic nin. He walked out of the room and closed the door lightly behind him. Lord Hokage. The medic greeted his leader in respect. Are they alright? Minato asked, worry clearly visible on his face. Your daughter is safe. She has a small case of chakra exhaustion. She'll be back to full health in a few hours, the head medic nin informed. After hearing those words, Minato and Kushina felt a huge weight lifted off their shoulder. Your son on the other hand. The man trailed off with a frown on his face making both parents to concern about their son. What happened to him? Kushina asked with worry laced in her voice. Her hands were shaking a little. I'm not sure if he'll fully recover from it. The head medic Snin took pause before looking at both parents. He has lost his so much blood, but that's not a big problem. Our major problem is the Nine Tails Chakra. The corrupted chakra has done some serious damage to his important organs, especially his both eyes. They are damaged to beyond repair. His body is further shut down and entered a comatose state. I'm afraid there is nothing I can do. Forgive me, he said. The only medic of Lady Tsunade caliber can do something. I insist you call her. Lady Tsunade has the skill and knowledge to possibly heal your son completely. He left them standing there alone and went to check his other patients. When two snapped out of their daze, they rushed toward their son's room. Tears welled in their eyes when their eyes landed on Naruto. Their son had an oxygen mask on his nose and mouth to assist him in breathing. His entire chest was covered in bandages as well as his left arm, his both eyes, the left side of his face and down his neck slightly. His chest had a few wires attached to monitor his heart rate and his breathing. Bandages that warped around his chest and both eyes were soaked in blood, telling them the seriousness of his injuries. This is my fault. Kushina was openly crying. What kind of mother am I? I took my daughter to the hospital but left my son drowning in his own blood. Minato wasn't feeling much better than she was. He looked down at his feet in shame as he clenched his fist. I'm such a terrible father. How could I let something like this happen to my son? Oh, how did this happen? A man wearing a boar mask asked his partner. His partner had bird mask on his face. Both men were from Anbu Black Ops, Special Assassination, and Tactical Squad. They were dressed standard uniforms which for Konoha Anbu. There's been talk, and I'm not sure if it's true or not but there's a lot of rumors going around about it. Bird paused. He looked around to make sure no one was in earshot. It was Natsumi, he said carefully, his voice barely above a whisper. She lost control over Fox's chakra and attacked her brother under its influence. But... But what about the seal? Bor asked, his mask successfully hiding his shocked expression. Maybe seal. Bird shook his head as if trying to shake out the silly thought I don't know, I'm not a seal master. Bird looked straight at the blonde-haired boy, they were guarding, through the small glass window built into the door. Two weeks had passed and Hokage's son was still in critical condition. He said, he is a strong boy, 
let's hope he'll wake up soon, Bor nodded, agreeing with his partner. He just hoped the boy would wake up soon. Healthy? Not with some traumatic experience. Oh, the night was unnaturally quiet. There was no voices or sounds, not even the normal rustlings, no bird, owl or barking dog. It seemed like, by godly, that all night animals were holding their breaths as if they waited for something to happen. The moon had risen higher, and was shining in at the uncurtained window, illuminating Naruto's hospital room with a silvery light. Moonlight and darkness alike bent and danced around the injured boy, surrounding him in a hazy metallic shimmer. And suddenly light changed. A stain began to spread over the face of the full moon, a stain like pooling blood. As it spread, the moonlight turned from white to red, the blood red of pain. The glow became brighter with each passing second and began to pulse before dying out altogether. After light came darkness. Dark shadows poured out of walls. It buzzed on the air and filled the room, expanding into every corner to block out the light. The darkness bubbled and rose up in flabby, half-formed shape which reached out with feeble hands. A pair of eyes burst open in the darkness and glowed, crackling energy spewing from their crystal form. F5 on you. The darkness changed its shape again as it twisted like ropes stretched and wrapped around Naruto's body as a blanket. Swelling darkness seeped into his wound, flowing in his veins, stitching all wound together. Oh! The same darkness emerged from a small black portal into a featureless glaring white world. The ground, sky, even the far-off horizon, all brought about an almost maddening snow glare effect. The world was empty, held no life signs, save for a small bubble of energy. The darkness changed its form once again as it twisted, taking a famine shape before turning into a beautiful woman. The woman possessed very delicate facial features, like extremely long, sweeping light-colored hair that touched the ground. Her featureless white eyes narrowed at the bubble as veins appeared near her temples. This chakra, the white space in front of her ripped like a sheet of paper. She stepped into the portal that led her near the bubble. She took a step forward and raised her right hand. When her dark nail touched the bubble, it burst apart and disintegrated to nothing but mere light particles. What? Naruto said. Naruto looked up at the woman with his blood-stained cheeks. She had two horn that came from the sides of her forehead, but he wasn't frightened by that. It was her chakra that frightened him. Her was vast. Compare with the vast sea-like chakra of her, the red chakra Natsumi had was nothing but a little pond water. The woman bent down cupped Naruto's cheeks with her hand. What is your name? She asked, her tone voice quite emotionless. Naruto first was reluctant to answer her question, but decided to answer it. He didn't want to get her bad side. And my name is Naruto Uzumaki he said. Why are you crying? The woman asked. My parents, Naruto stated in a dejected tone, hiding his anger and sadness in them. They care more about my twin sister than me. To them, I'm nobody. They don't care about whether I live or die. He began to sob and started to tell her everything about his parents, his twin sister, and his parents' favoritism toward her. Even after hearing Naruto's sob story, the woman's face showed no emotion. She looked at the boy with her white eyes. After a long minute of silence, she spoke again. Tell me, what are you going to do now? I I do not know, Naruto answered, as he wrapped his arms around his legs and buried his face in his knees. Maybe, I'll find peace here. I can help you if you want. Naruto jerked his head up at her. Why? He asked. He didn't know why this woman wanted to help him. There was nothing he could give her in return on top of that he didn't even know her name. Why do you want to help me? The expression on the woman's face continued to be unchanged. Because I'm your ancestor she said. Naruto eyes widened at hearing that she was his ancestor. A ancestor. But how? He asked. From her white eyes, he could tell that she had Byakugan. I don't mean to be rude but neither my mother nor my father is related to the Hyuga clan. You there do jutsu. You're obviously related to them. I'm also Hyuga clan's ancestor and originator of their bloodline. Huh? I don't get it. I'm Kaguya Utsutsuki. I'm the progenitor of the Hyuga, Sanju, Uchiha and Uzumaki clan. I'm the mother of Hagoromo, she said. She then noticed a confused expression on his face. You may know him by his other name the Sage of the Six Paths. The Sage of the Six Paths. You're the mother of the Sage of the Six Paths. Naruto nearly cried, quickly standing up on his feet. The shock and excitement were clearly visible on his face. The creator of ninjutsu and chakra. He had read about that man. The man was the god of all shinobi. Kaguya's face changed from emotionless to a face filled with anger and hatred. Boy. He is not a creator of chakra, she said, her voice harsh and cold, he and his brother were thieves, thieves of my chakra. Naruto gulped and nodded, as he didn't want to anger her more. She's scary. That foolish boy gave. He gave my chakra to humans, Kaguya said. Her temper was already close to boiling point. 
The slit on her forehead opened, showing her third eye, scaring Naruto even further. The eye had reds clear and irides, with a ripple pattern spreading over the eyeball and nine tomoe. The chakra belongs to me and mine alone, she finished. Naruto gathered some courage in his voice and asked, but why? Because chakra isn't for humans, Kaguya said, as she looked down at Naruto. Do you know how humans are using my chakra? To fight. To start a war, Naruto said. His tone of voice was too matured for his age. He looked into Kaguya's eyes. To cause destruction. Kaguya's dark lips curved into a smile, showing a positive emotion. Good. You can understand, we cannot let this happen to the world. My precious nursery. But what we can do? Naruto said. Entire world has chakra and it will live forever. Then we'll unite chakra in one. We'll take all chakra back, Kaguya suggested. Will you help me with that? How? Her statement had confused Naruto more. Is it even possible to collect all chakra? I'll tell you about it later. First, answer my question. Will you help me to bring peace in the world? Naruto hesitated, but it was the first time someone had given him attention, not to his sister. He didn't want to disappoint her. She was the first person who had acknowledged his existence. It felt really nice to him. He looked at Kaguya with his newfound determination. I will help you with my all power, he said. Good, Kaguya said. She placed her hand on his head. Naruto's body glowed for fleeting seconds before dying down. First, let me tell you history, the history of Utsutsuki clans and chakra. Naruto took a place on the non-existent floor and made himself comfortable to hear Kaguya. Kaguya started, Utsutsuki's greatest skill is their ability to use chakra. Oh, Naruto Uzumaki's body was resting on a hospital bed. No one else was in the room, so they weren't able to see black glow that was emitting from his body. The glow died down after a few seconds later. Slowly, Naruto's uninjured hand reached up and gently removed the oxygen mask. His nose wrinkled as the strong smell of medicine hit his nose, telling him that he was in the hospital. He disconnected all wires that attached to his body and sat up with his legs dangling over the side of the bed. He reached up and slowly pulled the medical tape, loosening the bandages over his eyes. Light stabbed his eyes, burning, painful. He closed his eyes immediately and slowly opened them again letting them adapt to the light. Grabbing the edge of the bed, he stood up on his feet, hobbled toward the bathroom, almost falling on his way. Naruto stood in front of the mirror, unsure he really wanted to remove the bandages. He took a deep breath, reached up, and unfastened the end of one of the bandages that wound around his head. Slowly carefully he unwrapped the remaining bandages. When his body was cleared, he saw scars all over his face and body. To his surprise, all scars began to heal rapidly. The skin began to patch itself up. That's new, Naruto muttered silently to himself. His skin was completely smooth and clear. He splashed handfuls of water onto his face. When he looked at his reflection in the mirror, he was briefly shocked. His eyes, they were no longer violet. He had two different colored eye, a purple right eye and a blood red left eyes. Both eyes had ripple patterns spread over eyeballs with no visible iris. Naruto was already familiar with the name. Rinnegan, he muttered. Naruto looked at his reflection but it looked like something floated behind it, another face, not his own, deep inside the glass. You not just have a Rinnegan, you've Ryan Sharangan, Kaguya said. Her reflection had formed the corner of the mirror. Your left eye doesn't have any Tomoe yet, but you'll receive them after gaining some experience. Mom? Naruto said, looking at Kaguya's reflection. After spending six months with Kaguya in an unknown place and knowing more about her, Naruto had started to call her mother. She was a better mother than Kushina, he asked. What happened to my old eyes? Your old eyes. They were damaged beyond repair, so my chakra replaced them with a new one. Thank you, mother. Naruto looked at the reflection of his dual dojutsu. Even though it was incomplete, he could still feel the great power coming from it. I haven't much chakra left, so listen carefully, my son, Kaguya said. I've sent a message to someone close to me. He is my will, so you can trust him. He'll assist you in your training as well as accomplish our goal. W will I see you again? he asked, afraid she would disappear forever. Yes, you will, she said, and her reflection faded away from the mirror. Naruto took a deep breath as he closed his eyes and cut off his chakra flow. A few seconds later his eyes opened again, showing his normal violet orbs. Oh, the Hokage Tower was among the largest edifices in Konoha, containing the chambers for the Hokage as well as meeting places for the council, abbey, and various other workers all of whom reported to the Hokage as the final authority over the ninja of the village. The fire daimyo might have been the lord of the land, but the Hokage commanded its troops. The fourth Hokage, Minato Namikaze, sat in his office, 
signing for the hundredth time that day. It had been six months since that incident. Those months had been a living nightmare for him and his family as they waited in desperate hope for a breakthrough in Naruto's condition. Minato's eyes landed on the only picture he had his entire family on it. In it, he was holding his wife while their hands were on one of Natsumi's both shoulders. Naruto was off to the side with a sad look on his face. He looked away as that picture reminded him of mistakes he had made with his family. His mistakes had been mostly affecting Naruto more than anyone else in the family and he had so blind to see it, Minato remembered why he did that. It was all because of the prophecy. Believing his daughter was the child of prophecy, he had chosen Natsumi over Naruto in hopes of ensuring the safety of the world. By doing that he pushed his only son to side. He felt ashamed for what he had done. Then something unprecedented happened. The glass of picture frame cracked vertically, separating Naruto from the rest of the family. It was an ominous sign which worried him greatly. Minato. A voice called out urgently. Minato turned the head toward the direction the voice came from. There stood the one person he hadn't seen in a while, his sensei Jiraiya. Even after all these years, he could say his teacher hadn't changed much in an appearance wise. He was still a tall man with waist length, spiky white hair that tied back into a ponytail, with two shoulder length bangs that framed both sides of his face. He also had red lines that ran down from his eyes and wore a horned forehead protector with the kanji for oil, which denoted his affiliation with Mount Mayaboku. Sensei, what are you doing here? Minato asked as he watched the man jump in through the window. Did you find Lady Tsunade? To find Tsunade, he had contacted his sensei. Jiraiya was a spy master and a former teammate of Tsunade, so he was the only person who could possibly find her. Jiraiya shook the head negatively. I'm really sorry, Minato. Minato slammed his hands on the table and stood up. Then why are you wasting time here, sensei? Naruto. Jiraiya cut in, Minato, this is important. What is more important than finding Tsunade? Her godson Naruto needs her. Minato, just listen, Jiraiya said. He knew his student was upset and worried. The prophecy has changed. Minato felt a pang of pain in his chest. What? What does it say now? He asked, not really wanting to find out. Well, oh, the Uzumaki mansion was a big mansion, not big as a Chiha or Hayuga, but still big enough for four people. It had a large compound which was comprised mostly of large training grounds and gardens. Kushina was sitting down on the couch in the living room. She was looking at the only picture she had her entire family together. It was the identical picture her husband had in his office. She still couldn't believe what they had done. She couldn't call herself a good mother, hell she couldn't even call herself a mother at all after what she had done. How could I have pushed one child away in the favor of the other? She took one last look at the family picture, but before she could leave something happened. The glass of the picture frame cracked. She felt a slight pain in her chest. Kushina. Minato's voice called her name when he flashed into the living room. Oh, Natsumi was having tea with her friends who were chatting happily. Next to her sat the only other person whose family had blonde hair, Ino Yamanaka. On her, other side sat her timid friend, a girl with pretty indigo hair color and lavender eyes Hinata Hayuga. Natsumi thought about her brother. Naruto's bloodied face was embedded in her mind. She sometimes had nightmares about the same face calling her killer. She tried to forget and reached for her teacup. But when her finger touched it, the cup cracked before it shattered completely. A pain swelled up in her stomach at the same time and she fainted on the spot. The last she heard before losing her consciousness was her friends calling her name again and again. Oh! Inside Natsumi's seal, there was a gigantic cage as ominous shadows swirled in the darkness. A single red slighted eye opened. A red-orange fox stepped forward in light showing massive figure. The mighty fox had sensed a powerful chakra that seemed to belong an unknown entity. This chakra, it's more powerful than old man's. The monster fox rose to his feet. His eyes flashed and he let out his mighty roar. A flame like red ore formed around his body. Heat vented out of him like a furnace. The red ore slammed into the cage bars over and over again, in an attempt to break it, but the seal blocked it effectively. Oh, Kishina sat next to her daughter's bed watching her rest. Minato stood next to her, his hand was on her shoulder. What's wrong with her? Kushina asked, worriedly, stroking her daughter's red hair. The seal seems to be working fine. Minato tapped his chin in a deep thought. I think the fox has tried to break the seal again, he said. They were so concerned about her. After hearing the new prophecy, they couldn't get it out of their head. What did it mean? How would it influence the future? At that moment, a dog-masked Anbu walked into the room. He had spiky white hair and wore standard Anbu armor. Sensei, he said. Yes, Kakashi? Minato said to his only living student. Sensei, your son, Kakashi said. 
He's woken up from a coma. A smile appeared on Minato's face and Kushina shed some tears. It was the first good news they'd heard in many months. The past month had been the worst and painful of their life. But they taught them the importance of the family and how bad some of their decision could affect their children. Thanks, Kakashi, Minato said. You can go now. Kakashi nodded and walked out of the room. Thank goddess, he is awake, Kushina said, relieved to know her son was awake. I hope he'll forgive us, Minato said, as he realized they had something to take care of. They didn't know that they were already too late for asking forgiveness. A seed of revolution had been sown in Naruto's mind by Kaguya had already sprouted and was just blooming. It would take years to grow and flourish but once it did, it would crack the very foundation that held the ninja world together. Minato sat behind his desk in the Hokage Tower trying to do his paperwork. The key word was trying. He just placed his pen back down. Sighing in frustration, he sat back in his chair and rubbed his temples. He stared out the window of his office. The past six years, Minato did not want to think about it. Those years reminded him of his constant failure in everything. However, no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't stop these thoughts of flashing over and over in his mind. So many things had gone wrong during that period of time. Hyuga Affair and Uchiha Clan Massacre were prime examples of it. Minato felt a pang of guilt in chess thinking about it. Hayuga Hisashi and all those innocent Uchiha clan members had paid a heavy price for his failures. Minato looked down at the photo that he had on his desk. His family photo. He picked it up and traced his fingers lightly over his son's picture. His son constantly reminded him that he failed to fulfill his job as a father. Naruto had become increasingly distant and cold to everyone even toward his twin sister. As far as Minato remembered, Naruto used to be a sweet and bright child, something he and Kushina had failed to see at that time, but these days, he would hardly see a smile on son's face. His son had become a shadow of his old self. Minato had no one to blame but himself for it. His foolishness had caused his son so much pain in the past. Then there was his next child. Ever since the Nine Tails Chakra nearly caused her brother's death, Natsumi had developed a great fear of using Fox's chakra. Fearing for worse, she had refused to tap into the beast's chakra. All incidents had also created another problem that Minato didn't know how to resolve. Somehow the information about the incident had leaked in public, planting a seed of doubt into the Leaf citizens' mind and causing them to doubt of his words of Natsumi being their savior. The Leaf citizens hadn't shown any real open hostility toward his daughter, but Minato had seen a slight change in their behavior toward her. Minato's train of thought interrupted by a quiet knock on the door. Come in, he said. Minato saw the former Hokage Hiruzen Sarutobi, who was somewhere around 68 years old, walk in his office. The third Hokage was a light-skinned man of below-average stature with gray hair. Followed closely behind his proceeder was his least favorite people. Homura Mito Kato and Kohari Yudatane. They were around the same age as Hiruzen. Homura was gray hair a bearded man with glasses and had a strong jawline a facial structure. Koharu had gray hair. Her hair was pulled back in a twin bun locked by a traditional Japanese hairpin with two pearls dangling from the side. Two of them were part of the Leaf's Elder Council. Hiruzen Sama and Honorable Elders, what can I do for you? Minato asked, showing some respect to the former Hokage and his ex-teammates. He gestured for them to take a seat. They gladly accepted his offer. Hiruzen pulled his pipe out of his sleeve and lit it with a quick application of fire chakra. Minato, he put it in his mouth and inhaled it, before releasing a cloud of smoke from his mouth. We are here to discuss the upcoming graduation exam. Adjusting his glasses with his thumb, Homura said, As you already know, some students in today's graduation exam are special. Most of them are from famous clans. There are also the last Uchiha and her children, Koharu added. Your daughter is a Jinchuriki and your son. He is a young prodigy and a natural genius. He's all qualities to become a Jinan. But the reason he isn't a Jinan yet is Yuminato, Homura said, as he gave him a glare, showing he didn't like the decision of his leader. Your son would have been a great asset to Konoha military. Minato narrowed eyes at Homura. He was too young to become a Jinan at that time, Homura-san, he said in a harsh tone to prove his point. Do I remind you what happened to our last young prodigy? Homura flinched at the mention of Uchiha Itachi. Minato had another reason, which was different from he had told Homura. He still remembered that day over four years ago. Minato had flashed into the living room of the Uzumaki mansion using his most famous jutsu. Kushina-chan, are you ready? Kushina was wearing an expensive-looking kimono, silk green in color with brown stitching at the hems. On her delicate feet was a pair of silk slippers, a few inches high for extra height. Yes. She muttered. Minato looked at the beautiful face of his wife. He could clearly tell something was bothering her. What's wrong? It's about Naruto. Oh. 
He knew his son was a painful topic to his wife. He hasn't forgiven us yet, Minato-kun. Kushina's eyes looked his crystal blue eyes. Don't lose hope. I know he will forgive us, eventually. He put a hand on her shoulder to comfort her. Where is he now? I don't know, I haven't seen him since breakfast. A noise from upstairs caught couple's attention. Minato saw his daughter walking down the stairs. Natsumi was dressed in a traditional red kimono and pair of silk slippers. She stood ready to go to the festival. You looked beautiful, little princess. Ready to go to the festival? Minato asked cheerfully, trying to lighten the mood. Yes, dad. I'm ready to take all prizes that I'll get after winning every game. Natsumi walked toward them. She then noticed that her brother wasn't there with her parents. Hey, where is Naruto Nichan? She asked, looking around to search her brother. Before Minato could open his mouth to answer her question, the front door opened and Naruto cautiously walked inside. His clothes were ragged up and had dirt spots on them. Being a leader of the village, Naruto could tell that his son had done some heavy training. Minato smiled. Naruto, get ready. We are going to the festival. Naruto raised his eyebrow. No thanks, he replied in his bored tone, and he began to walk upstairs towards his bedroom. Kushina was very stubborn, she refused to take no for an answer. She ran after her son. Minato followed shortly behind her. Naruto, Kushina shouted. Naruto stopped and turned back to see both his so-called parents. What do you want? He asked. Kushina flinched at the acidity in her son's voice. Why, Naruto? Why don't you want to come with us? We're a family. A family, you say? Naruto laughed. Since, when we are family. He replied harshly before he walked into his bedroom and closed the door in front of their faces. Naruto. He hates us. Naruto's unkind words nearly brought tears to Kushina's eyes. Minato pulled her into a hug and consoled her as best as he could. He sighed, he hated to see her like this. Let's go. We've to go to attend the festival, he said. Kushina looked at her husband and asked, Why? Because I'm a Hokage, it is my duty to attend public events. Kushina nodded. She didn't like it but she was going to do this for sake of her husband and daughter. When they walked downstairs, they saw their daughter crying. Natsumi sobbed. It's my fault. He hates us because of me, she cried harder, bringing her knees to her chest and wrapping her arms around them. No doubt, she had heard everything. Kushina went to her and knelt down beside her daughter. Shuo, she hushed, using a hand to gently rub her upper back. It's not your fault, Natsumi, if it's anyone's fault, it's ours. She wiped off the tears from her face. She looked up at Minato and gave him a nod. Minato went forward and grabbed his wife and daughter's shoulders. He used his famous jutsu and flashed away with them. Oh, Minato was watching all children who were enjoying themselves and playing the games that were part of the festival. He also noticed Natsumi's sour mood as she walked with them. He didn't blame her for that. Minato, Kushina. A familiar voice called. Minato and Kushina quickly turned around to see a familiar face of Hiruzen Sarutobe. Hiruzen Sama, Minato said. Hey, old man. Kushina greeted causing Minato to sweat drop at her disrespectful behavior. Hiruzen smiled and walked toward them. After all these years, Kushina's behavior didn't bother him anymore. How are you two? We are all right, thank you for asking, Minato answered, smiling. And Naruto? Hiruzen had tried to find the boy, but he had failed to see the particular shade of blonde hair. Where is he? Minato noticed hearing their son's name Kushina's mood had dropped again. He placed his hands on her shoulders to support her. He's home. He's not interested in the festival, he said. Why? Before Minato could say anything, he heard Ino's voice as she yelled his daughter's name out in fear. He quickly turned around. Natsumi was on the ground holding her stomach in pain. He rushed toward her with Kushina and Hiruzen following behind him. Kushina held her daughter tightly and called her name. Natsumi, am om. Dadi. Grandpa, Natsumi weakly said. Her eyes blinking rapidly as she began to lose her consciousness. Ra. She growled in a deep voice before falling unconscious. Hiruzen was worried as he could feel a large amount of fox's chakra leaking out from Natsumi. Sensei. Kakashi had landed in front his teacher. He was in his onbu dress code. Our sensors have picked up some unknown chakra signatures. Where? Minato asked. His azure eyes hardened like steel, showing the reason he had become a leader. Near the Uzumaki mansion. What? Naruto. Kushina shouted, as she realized Naruto was alone in the home. Kakashi. Take care of Natsumi, Minato ordered before turning toward the former Hokage and his wife. Let's go. Minato used the flying thunder god Jutsu and disappeared with Kushina and Hiruzen. Oh, as soon as Minato, Hiruzen, and Kushina appeared outside the Uzumaki house with a yellow flash, 
They felt a large amount of dark chakra emanating from the inside. Naruto is in there. We need to get there quick, Kushina shouted, fearing for the safety of her son. Without wasting any time, they ran inside and went toward where they could sense the dark chakra. This chakra, it feels even more sinister than the Nine Tails, Minato thought. When they reached the source of the chakra, they saw a lot of blood over there. Just a few distances away, they found four bodies of unknown shinobis hanging from a big tree. The blood was seeping from where the black chains had stuck through their bodies, to the grassy ground below. Stone shinobi? What were they doing here? Hiruzen said, recognizing the symbol on masks. The big tree got the fourth's attention. That tree shouldn't be there. As far as he knew on this part of the training ground had no tree. There was only one bloodline capable of growing full-grown trees in one day or in a few minutes. These days, only one person had that bloodline, but that person was out of the village for an important mission. The Hokage's eyes followed the chains back to their source and his eyes widened. Naruto stood there in the middle of the training grounds alone with the chains of unknown black metal protruding from his back. He yanked back the chains out of the dead bodies, making them disappear. The tree suddenly sprouted two branches covered in fur-like leaves. The branches wrapped around the bodies before they hit the ground. Would release. He can use would release, Hiruzen said as his eyes widened in surprise. Those were chakra chains. I didn't know Naruto's inherited my special chakra. Did you? Kushina asked her husband. Minato had said nothing. He had been staring at Naruto's emotionless violet eyes. Minato could never forget his son's eyes. Those eyes had held no emotion in them. After that. He had denied Council's all attempts to let Naruto join early in the Shinobi program. That incident had also led to question about Naruto's wood-release bloodline. Thankfully, Hiruzen had come with a theory. The Uzumaki clan had close ties with the Senju clan. Maybe, because of this Naruto could use the wood-release like first Hokage Hashirama Senju. Keeping Naruto's wood-release as an S-rank secret, they had released very small details about the stone incident in the public. It had contributed to raise Naruto's popularity among the Leaf citizens. Minato, Hiruzen called patiently. Minato shook his head before he turned back to his visitors and asked, Sorry, did you say something? Hiruzen sweat dropped and said, You are truly Kakashi's sensei. Koharu made a fake cough to catch their attention toward her before saying, Well anyway, let's talk about team's arrangement. Oh, Natsumi was sitting in the classroom of Shinobi Academy with her childhood friends. She had gotten her father's blue eyes but otherwise could have been a mini carbon copy of her mother, same build, same skin tone, same long bright red hair with strands that framed both sides of her face. Her ninja gear also looked similar to her mother's old Janan gear, a short-sleeved, thin kimono-like blouse with a dark embroidered border, held closed with a black obi, a dark skirt, and stockings that stopped at her thighs and brown and brown sandals. To Natsumi's right side was her childhood friend, Hinata Hayuga, the heiress of the Hayuga clan. She had dark blue hair, fair skin, and customary white eyes of her clan that had a tinge of lavender. She was wearing a cream-colored hooded jacket with a fire symbol on the upper right and left sleeves and fur around the cuffs and hem, with navy blue pants. Like the rest of her clan, she possessed the renowned Byakugan. She was the shy girl in the Natsumi's little group. To Natsumi's left side was her another childhood friend, Ino Yamanaka from the Yamanaka clan in her fairly revealing purple clothing with small silver hoop earrings. She was a fair-skinned girl of average height with blue eyes. The most noticeable trait in her appearance was her long, blonde hair, which was in a high ponytail with bangs covering the right side of her face. There was Kiba Inuzuka from the Inuzuka clan with his nin dog, Akamaru, a tiny puppy with white fur. Like the rest of his clan, Kiba had messy brown hair, sharp black eyes with vertical slit-like pupils, pronounced canine teeth, and nails that can change into claws. He also had the distinct red fang markings of the Inuzuka clan on his cheeks. His attire consisted of dark grayish pants reaching to his calves and a gray, hooded fur-lined coat over an apparent plate of armor and fishnet undershirt. Next to Kiba was a boy with his head down, sleeping. He was Shikamaru Nara, heir of the Nara clan. He had quite long jet black hair tied in a spiky ponytail, narrow brown eyes. His attire was rather plain consisting of a green-lined mesh t-shirt under a short sleeve gray jacket with green edges, adorned on both the sleeves and the back with a circle with a line through it, brown pants, and blue sandals. Next to Shikamaru was a chubby boy who was eating a bag of chips. He was Shikamaru's best friend, Kuji Akimichi from the Akimichi clan. He had spiky, brown hair, swirl marks on his cheeks, like the rest of his clan. He was quite husky, which was a necessity in his clan to perform their techniques. He was wearing black shorts, a long white scarf, a short-sleeved, green howery, over a white shirt with his clan's obligatory kanji for food on it, small, 
hoop earrings, and his legs and forearms were wrapped in bandages. Right behind them was a fair-skinned boy with dark, bushy, brown hair. His name was Shino Aburame. He was wearing dark sunglasses and a sea-green jacket with a high, upturned collar. He was a fellow of the Hidden Leaf Aburame clan, whose members used insects as weapons. Away from all students, sitting next to a window was a dark-haired boy, Sasuke Uchiha, the last loyal Uchiha of the Leaf. He was a fair-skinned boy who had onyx eyes and black chin-length hair. His hair was spiky in the back with bangs. His clothing consisted of the traditional Uchiha clothing, a blue, short sleeve shirt with a high collar and the Uchiha crest on the back and white arm warmers. Looking at Sasuke's direction with heart in her large green eyes was Sakura Haruno. She was the bright pink-haired girl with fair skin and a large forehead. Her ninja gear was a sleeveless red chipao dress with white circular designs, with a zipper tight dark green shorts. They all were most promising and talented students who had good chances to become shinobi of the leaf. The whole class was comprised of about 30 students. Most of them were civilian children and learning ninja arts was just fun or something their parent had forced them to do. The class was bustling with noises. All students were really excited. After all, it was graduation day. When two academy instructors walked swiftly into the noisy classroom, the entire class fell silent. They got in front of the class with their backs facing the blackboard. First academy instructor was Iruka Umino. He was a man of average height and build. He had brown hair that he kept in a ponytail, dark eyes, and a scar that ran across the bridge of his nose. Next to instructor was Mizuki Tuji. He had shoulder length, white hair that had a slight hint of blue to it and green eyes. Both instructors were dressed in a standard The Hidden Leaf Shinobi outfit complete with forehead protector, sandals, and flak jacket. Good morning, Iruka said. As all of you know today is your graduation exam. He started his boring speech about ninja life. Ina leaned to the side and whispered, PSST. Natsumi. Natsumi turned to her and in a low tone, she replied, Yes, where is Naruto-kun? Just then, without any warning, the classroom's door flung open, catching everyone's attention there. A boy in a hooded shirt entered the classroom. He was fairly tall for his age, wearing red-black customized armor over a black high-collared shirt and black pants with matching sandals and fingerless gloves. He started to move toward his seat at the back of the class. Naruto, Iruka shouted, you can't wear the hood inside the classroom. Whatever, sensei, Naruto said, and he removed his hood making most of the girls in the class blush. Naruto had the same violet-colored eyes like before, but his spiky blonde hair had gained a silver tint on it. His skin tone had also lightened in the six years. Kaguya's chakra had made sure that he didn't look like a clone of his father. Ignoring everyone, he took his seat and crossed his arms with a bored expression on his face. Naruto Nichan. Natsumi looked at her brother. Her face dropped, her eyes sad. Even with all training she had done with her parents, she couldn't match up against her brother. He was a prodigy, smart and strong. He was a rare genius like their father. She had tried everything to improve her relationship with him, but nothing had worked against her brother's cold behavior toward her. As you all know today is graduation exam. It will take place in the next room. Come in there when you hear your name being called, Iruka said, and he completed his speech. Iruka started the test to find the potential Jinan. One by one, he called the name. Naruto watched Shino leave the testing room with a headband that had a blue cloth. He watched a student centered and exited either with a headband or none. But most of them are going to fail in the next test, he thought. He had heard about a test that used to weed out non-capable Jinan. He thought were cut off when he heard Iruka called his name. Iruka shouted, Naruto as, he stopped in the middle of pronouncing the name, when he felt Naruto's cold stare. Na Naruto, it's your turn. Naruto stood up and started to walk toward the exam room. Good luck, Naruto-kun. Good luck, Naruto-kun. Do your best. His many fan girls gave him their best wishes. Good luck, naruto Nichan. Natsumi said to her brother who just ignored her as usual. Why does he always ignore you? Ino asked. It was one question she always had in her mind. Natsumi sighed. It's a long story and I don't want to talk about it. She looked at Naruto again as he got into the exam room. A few minutes later, Naruto came out of the exam room wearing his new leaf forehead protector around his left arm. Ignoring all congratulations he was getting from his fangirls, he sat back in his seat. Natsumi Uzumaki, Iruka shouted. It's your turn, Natsumi. Good luck, Ino said, smiling. Thanks. Natsumi said. She walked towards the exam room and stopped in front of the door. Determined to make her parents proud, she took a deep breath, then cleared her mind. She opened the door and went in. Oh, outside the academy, many parents were seen chatting with each other, or their kids. 
Some of them were happy for their children's success while others were sad for their children's failure. Minato and Kushina were also there. Both of them were looking their children, Dad. Mom. They heard a familiar voice shouting. Their heads turned towards the direction of the voice and saw their daughter running towards them and getting her way through the crowd. I did it, Natsumi said. She showed them her forehead protector. I'm a ninja now. One step closer to being the first female Hokage. Yes, you did it, Minato said, ruffling her daughter's hair to annoy her. Natsumi slapped his hand away. Don't do that. I'm not a kid anymore, she said, shooting an annoyed look at her father. No matter how much you grow up. You've always be my little princess. Natsumi huffed and folded her arms across her chest in frustration. Kushina smiled. She bent down to her daughter's height and gave her hug. We are happy for you. Natsumi smiled. Wrapping her around her mother, she hugged back. Kushina released her daughter from the hug and slowly stood up. The smile never left her face. Her eyes fell upon Naruto. He was calmly walking away from the academy building with his hand in his pocket. He had his forehead protector tied around the upper part of his left arm. Naruto. She called out. She quickly caught up with him. I am really happy. Save your breath, Naruto said in a cold tone, cutting her off. Because I don't care. He continued his way, overlooking the tear that fell from her eyes. Kushina, someday, he'll forgive us, Minato said, as he stood next to his wife. He pulled her into a one-armed hug, attempting to comfort her. Oh, Naruto was standing on the top of Hashirama Senju's head carved into the stone, looking down on the hidden leaf village. The hooded cloak, he was wearing over the ninja gear, was blowing in the wind. His unique dojutsu was active. His Rinnegan eye hadn't changed much, but his left eyes had evolved. His Rin Sharingan had gained three Tomoe in the first ring, they were spinning rapidly around the pupil. The hidden village of leaves is a beautiful village. Having very bright and warm weather, it's a great place to live to anyone. It's also one of the most powerful villages in existence, responsible for producing many of the greatest ninja in history like Hashirama Sanju, Toburama Sanju, Hiruzen Sarutobi, it's painful for me to admit that Minato Namikaze is also one of them, he said. He crossed his arms as he looked up at the moon shining brightly in the night sky. But this village also has dark histories. It's also responsible for creating many deadliest missing ninja. Don't you think? Yes. Madara Uchiha, Orochimaru, Tobi, and Itachi Uchiha were Leaf's ninja before becoming criminals, a voice answered his question. Naruto turned toward a strange mutated creature. The creature had a human-like shape and facial features, white skin, short green hair, a lone yellow eye, as well as unusually rounded teeth. You're right wide Zetsu, but the last one is the victim of one of the Leaf's starkest secret, he said. Aha, yes, Donzo and his Rudanbu. So anyway. Naruto turned around and looked back at the Leaf Village, do you have any interesting news for me? Yes, Zetsu said in a slightly cheerful tone. It's about Academy Instructor, Mizuki. Oh, in the deep forest, Iruka and Mizuki were battling against each other, but as things stood, it seemed Mizuki would be the one to prevail. Give the scroll back, Mizuki, Iruka shouted. Mizuki only laughed and said, with this scroll, I will become invincible. Mizuki slashed Iruka's shoulder with a poison kunai. The poison was soon to start its effect on Erika's body. He suddenly began feeling tired and dizzy and fell to the ground. With his blurry eyes, he looked up and saw Mizuki bring a kunai down to him to finish him. So this is it. This is how I'll die. Iruka closed his eyes and waited for the inevitable. He had a good life, and he was not afraid of death. The sound of kunai clang snapped him out of his own thoughts. He saw a hooded figure block the kunai and push the traitor away. Ananbu, thank God, Iruka thought but he was proven wrong. Naruto, Mizuki said. Iruka looked up at the hooded figure. Even with blurry eyes, he could see there was a familiar silvery blonde hair sticking out from the hood. Naruto? W what are you dining here? You? How dare you try to ruin my plan? Mizuki shouted. Whatever, Naruto snorted, putting his hands in pockets. Gritting his teeth, Mizuki dashed toward him with kunai in his hand. Naruto, Iruka shouted, worried for his student's safety. Naruto stood there doing nothing only eyeing the traitor lazily. He yawned once more, hands still in his pockets. In the last moment, just as the kunai was about to connect to his chest, he simply sidestepped. He brought his knee up to the surprised Mizuki and slammed him right on his stomach, giving him a heavy blow. Before the man could recover, he brought his leg up and brought it down on his back, making the man kiss the ground. Is this all you can do? Naruto said. Weak. He gave Mizuki a hard kick sending him skidding across the ground and slamming into a tree. Mizuki glared at the blonde-haired boy angrily. He tried to stand, but could not retain his balance. 
with one hand braced against the tree, he shakily stood up on his feet. I will show you my true power, boy, he cried. Naruto watched with a raised eyebrow as Mizuki took a vial from one of his vest pockets and brought it to his lips. He chugged it down in one gulp, shivering from the taste. The half-empty vial dropped onto the ground from Mizuki's hand as pain ripped at his inner throat and scoured down into his belly. It was agony beyond all reason. Mizuki grabbed his neck with his fingers as his throat began to burn. He tried to scream but no sound came. He tried to raise his feet and began to stumble. Mizuki dropped to his knees, screaming in pain. His ears lengthened and came to a point. His body grew taller, and orange fur with black strips grew quickly and covered his body. His teeth had also grown longer and had become razor sharp, especially his canines. Behold! Mizuki got up when the transformation finished, looking like a bipedal tiger. The ultimate gift from Orochimaru-sama. So what are you? A war kitten? Naruto mocked him. Mizuki's anger had reached boiling point. Brat. You will tremble in fear at my strength. Mizuki vanished from the sight and reappeared in front of Naruto. He sliced the blonde across the stomach. The force of the attack sent Naruto flying backwards and against a tree. Ha ha ha. Mizuki began to laugh evilly but stopped when he saw instead of blood, a pinch black smoke leaking out from the cut. What? Naruto's body dissolved into black smoke. The smoke slithered toward the ex-academy instructor. Mizuki slashed his claw at the smoke but nothing happened. He looked at his hand. The skin on his fingers where he had touched the smoke had been badly burned. Mizuki watched as Naruto's upper body materialized from smoke more than 15 feet in front of him. He reached into his pouch, pulling out a pair of kunai. He threw the one at the boy. The kunai only met an empty air. The black smoke stretched toward Mizuki and out of that smoke leapt Naruto. His feet slammed into the traitor's back. He cried in pain as he stumbled forward. Naruto's feet touched the ground, he spun, crossed his arms, and dissolved again in the form of the black smoke. Anticipating the attack, Mizuki spun, cutting air. Naruto was there, his feet outstretched for kick, but again his kunai passed through the only smoke. He coughed and retched as it swarmed over him, burning his lungs and tasting fell on his tongue. Within the smoke, he heard Naruto's voice, echoing all around him. This is entertaining, isn't it? Mizuki gritted his canines in silent fury. Come out of that boy, and show yourself. Don't hide in the dark, he roared. Sensei, we are ninjas. We hide the dark, and kill from the dark. Mizuki's eyes widened as Naruto's cold voice came from behind him. There was no time to scream. No time to move out of the way. A black chain with sharp tip burst through Mizuki's chest. Pain exploded, radiating out from his heart to every inch of his body. Goodbye, Sensei. Naruto could feel the man's life fade away. He jerked back the chakra chain letting his former sensei's body fall to the ground. He turned toward his other sensei. Iruka was lying on the ground motionless. He went toward him and checked the pulse on his wrist. He's alive. But unconscious. I need to heal him. Can't have him die on me now. Too many explanations for later, Naruto said, mostly himself. He sighed and made a single shadow clone who went to copy the forbidden scroll of sealing. The real ones put a hand on Iruka's chest. A green glow emanated from the point of contact. He was using the manifestation of the chakra to diagnose the condition of the academy instructor. Judging from the way he frowned, it wasn't anything good. Oh! Two Anbu jumped down to the ground and walked toward Iruka. One Anbu knelt down next to the academy instructor and she began to check his pulse, breathing and pupils. She had straight, purple hair reaching down to her waist. Her Anbu mask resembled a cat with three red stripes, one vertical stripe on the forehead and two horizontal stripes one on each cheek. She then looked up at her partner and nodded her head. Her partner had an eagle's mask on his face that covered in green and red markings. He glanced at Mizuki, his body had returned to normal after his death. He went and knelt down beside the corpse. He could see something sharp had pierced in Mizuki's back between the shoulders and right through to his chest. He is dead. Eagle stood up. His eyes looked around for searching something. But where's the scroll of sealing? It's here, a voice said from behind him, unsheathing his sword. Eagle quickly spun around to deal with danger. When he saw the fourth Hokage's son, shoulders sagging, he visibly relaxed and sighed in loud relief. This boy nearly gave me a heart attack, he thought as he sheathed his sword back. Eagle didn't want to admit it, but the blonde boy's sudden appearance behind him had caught him off guard. So, what happened here? He asked. Naruto handed the forbidden scroll of sealing to the Anbu and said, That man was working for Orochimaru, he said, pointing his thumb at Mizuki's body. He stole the forbidden scroll of sealing and tried to kill a fellow leaf ninja. In our fight, he drank something from this, he threw the vial at Eagle, 
and turned himself into some kind of bipedal tiger monster. Eagle studied Naruto, searching for any lie in his statement. He looked into the vial. A small amount of liquid still left in it. He looked at the boy again. Very well, he said, pocketing it for further investigation. Good job. Did you heal Iruka? Kat asked as she walked toward them. A black smoke began oozing off of Naruto's body. Yes, I did, he said, looking at her. You did a good job healing him. Thank you. But he still needs medical attention. I am not a healer, so I am very limited in healing technique, Naruto said. He was slowly dissolving into the pitch black smoke. Goodbye. He then puffed out of existence. That boy reminds me of Itachi Uchiha, Eagle said. He's emotionless and genius just likes him. Cat nodded. Let's hope he doesn't snap out like Itachi and kill his own family. As a high-ranking Anbu officer, she knew most things that were happening within the village. She knew about the strained relationship between Hokaye's family and their son. The boy hated his own family. She couldn't blame the boy. She would have done the same thing if her family had been responsible for sending her six months in the coma. Then he disappeared in the black smoke, Kat said as she finished her report on the events that had happened the previous night in front of the Hokage and his advisors. Minato felt more than just fatherly pride for his son's actions. Thank you, Kat. You can go now, he said. Kat nodded and gave a bow before disappearing in a puff of smoke. Hiruzen puffed out smoke from his pipe. Hmm, Genjutsu, and medical ninjutsu, he said to himself. Your son is definitely stronger than we thought, Minato. It seems he's been hiding his true skills. Koharu said, looking at the fourth Hokage. Level-headed, intelligent and cunning, Homura said, who was clearly impressed the skill Naruto had shown. He's a perfect example of a shinobi. Yes, Minato said. Now, what about the team arrangement? I think we should put both Naruto and Natsumi together on the same team, Hiruzen said. Homura looked at his old friend and nodded. It's a great idea. This way, if Natsumi ever loses control of the Nine Tails Chakra, Naruto will be there to restrain her with his chakra chains and if it's possible then with his wood release, he said. Minato agreed with them. Suppressing a tailed beast chakra is difficult, not impossible, he said. But we have to assign a good instructor who can help Naruto to fully grab his wood release ability. And there is only one person who can do that, the third Hokage said. Tenzo, Koharu said. She was one of a few people who knew about him. Minato said, I will speak with him. I'm sure he'll be happy to give Naruto his private lesson. Hiruzen pulled a pipe from his mouth and blew out a small puff of smoke. It's a very nice idea. It will keep his wood release power secret for now, he said. Anyway, let's start forming other teams first, Minato said as he gave a signal. A Chunin brought a stack of papers inside and put them on the desk. After giving a bow to his superiors, he left. Koharu picked up the first paper. The first team is Team 10. This team will work under Asumas Arotobe. Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara, and Kuji Akimichi will be on this team. The next generation in the Ino Shikacho trio, Hiruzen said, approving the choice. He released a cloud of smoke from his pipe. Homer adjusted his glasses and read the next paper. Team 9 is still active. He put that paper aside and picked up the next paper. Kiba Inuzuka, Hinata Hayuga, and Shino Aburame, they will become Team 8. Kurana Yuhei will lead the team. This team can become a great tracking team with Hyuga clan's Byakugan, Aburame clan's bugs, and Inuzuka clan's dogs as well as their own heightened sense of smell, Minato said. We've some problem with Team 7, so keep it for later, Koharu said, putting Team 7's paper side. She took another paper. Now for Team 6. Oh, a far away from the leaf village, in a deep forest, Naruto was seating on a rock. Legs crossed, back straight. He was in a calm meditating position. The place around him was filled with wildlife and nature, there were plenty of trees and animals around. He made numerous hand seals. Wood release, nativity of a world of trees. All around him, plants started to grow. Not small plants, but giant, tall, and beautiful trees whose roots shot out of the ground into the air, crushing and merging with old trees in the forest. As they branched out, they formed leaves and caves beneath their bases. One such root burst out of the ground beneath him lifting him off the ground. Still not good, Naruto muttered himself and he went for another set of hand seals. Oh, does anyone have a problem with arranged teams? Koharu asked. No one protested or said anything. Accepting no one had a problem, she picked up remaining paper. Now, there are just four students left. First two are your children, Minato. She took first two papers and placed them on one side of the desk. Another student is Sasuke Uchiha. She placed his paper next to Naruto and Natsumi's papers. The final one is Sakura Haruno. She took the last paper in her hand, 
which was Sakura's paper, last in the line. What is in her report? Homura asked to know more about the girl. Hiruzen picked up Sakura's paper. She is among the top students in the class. Other than Naruto, she is the only student who has gotten full marks in all written tests, he said. She has also shown in great talent in chakra control. Naruto and Natsumi must be on the same team, Koharu said. And only Kakashi can teach Sasuke about the Sharingan. Hmm, we could always put Sakura on a different team, Homura suggested. No, that isn't necessary. I think I have a much better solution, Minato said suddenly, catching his advisor's attention. What's in your mind, Minato? Hiruzen asked. Put all of them on the Team 7, Minato said, shocking everyone. He quickly held his hand up, stopping Homura and Koharu from saying anything. This team is going to be our assault and frontline combat team. An assault and frontline combat team? Hiruzen repeated. Neither he nor his old teammates understood what Minato was trying to say. Being a Jinchuriki since the day of her birth as well as a descendant of the Uzumaki clan, Natsumi alone possesses a massive amount of chakra. She can easily take a position of a powerhouse of the Team 7, Minato said. I know Sasuke hasn't activated his bloodline Sharingan yet, but after activating it, he can become an Anjutsu specialist of the team. As for Sakura, putting her on this team may not seem like a good idea, but with her natural talent in controlling Chakra, she does have the capability to become a medical nin. We all know how a medical nin is helpful to a team. He paused to let the information to sink in. The last is my son Naruto. He has shown a natural talent in most of shinobi arts. He is equally smart and cunning. With those qualities, He's suitable for a position of brain of the team. If you put that way then it'll be a great team, Hiruzen said. He had liked Minato's idea. Yes, but leading a team of fully trained ninja and leading a team of four freshly graduated Janan is two separate things, Minato. Kakashi will also have to teach all of them. Can he handle it? Homura asked. I'm sorry but I don't think this is going to work. Homura had no doubt Kakashi was one of the best ninja the Leaf had ever produced. But Kakashi was also one of the laziest people he'd ever known. Maybe, Kakashi can't handle this team on his own, but with the assistance of another Jounin, this plan will work, Minato said. Koharu asked, you mean another Jounin instructor? Hiruzen puffed once more and removed the pipe from his mouth. Who is on your mind? He asked Minato. Someone who can keep a tight leash on my students' bad habits. Oh, Naruto was walking toward the classroom, his head held low, the hood draped over it. He took another bite of his apple. It was the day when the recently graduated students would be assigned to Janan teams. He calmly strolled into class and threw away the remains of his apple in a dustbin that was at the corner of the room. He walked toward his desk. He looked around and spotted Shikamaru Nara sleeping in his seat. Without disturbing him, he walked toward his own seat. Sitting down in his seat, he crossed his arms over his chest, and closed his eyes, being decided to get some more rest. A loud screaming woke Naruto up from his sleep. The first thing he saw when he opened his eyes was Sasuke kissing a brown-haired boy from the class. Everyone in the classroom and Sasuke's fangirls were looking at the scene in front of them with wide eyes. I didn't know, Sasuke plays for the other team, Naruto thought. Take note, maintain a long, very long distance between us. Both boys jumped away from each other and began to spit out the taste of each other's lips. Unfortunately, for the brown-haired boy. Sasuke's fangirls did not take well to the fact that he stole their Sasuke-kun's first kiss from them. They proceeded to beat the poor boy to a bloody pulp for the next few minutes, which only ended because of the arrival of Iruka. All right class, take a place, no one paid Iruka any mind, and continued their talking and playing. I said sit down, he roared using his demon big head jutsu, which was not technically a jutsu, but his job was done as all of them immediately took their seats. He cleared his throat and looked to his class. There wasn't any weakness in his voice nor was he showing any signs of yesterday's injuries. Today, Iruka-sensei. Sakura interpreted, holding her hand up. Yes, Sakura? She stood up from her seat and asked, where is Mizuki-sensei? Well, Iruka said. He and the Hokage had come up with an excuse to cover up the Mizuki death, he is on a long-term, top-secret mission and I can't tell you about it. Because if I tell you, I'll have to kill you. It was truly a lame excuse, but its job had done. It scared Sakura at that point she nodded her head fearfully without asking any more question and took a place on her seat. Now class, he started one of his boring speeches about ninja life. Natsumi looked at her twin brother out of the corner of her eyes. She knew that what her sensei had said was a big lie. The last night, she had accidentally heard her parents in the hallway talking about Mizuki sensei. The silver-haired academy teacher wasn't on some kind of long-term, top-secret mission. He was dead and it was Naruto, 
who had killed him for his treason. I hope you to do your duties with the utmost diligence and not to dishonor your village. From now on, you'll be placed in teams under the tutelage of your Jounin Sensei. Team 1. Iruka began. Both Sasuke and Naruto's fans were waiting who among them would end up one of their squad. There were many possibilities. Team 7 is Haruno Sakura, Sasuke Uchiha. Iruka winced as he heard the little banshee screaming in victory. Natsumi Uzumaki and Naruto under John and Kakashi Hitake and assistants Kushina Uzumaki. Iruka paled as he was struck by a feeling of utter dread. He looked to see Naruto's cold stare. He swallowed a lump in his throat and continued shakily to declare the other teams. Naruto really wanted to slam his head into a table or something. I can't believe it. He thought. How come every time I try to keep my distance away from Uzumaki family, Minato always does something that sticks them with me. Sasuke was also clearly unhappy for being saddled with Sakura. He had no problem with his other two teammates, but that useless fangirl was the one he disliked. Sakura was cheering inside her mind. It was her dream to end up together with her Sasuke-kun. It was common knowledge that Janan were put in four-man cells or squad, consisting of three Janan and a Janan sensei. However, her team constituted an exception. It was a six-man cell, four Janan and two Janan sensei. My love for Sasuke-kun is strong enough to make Hokage-sama bend rules for me, she thought. Another Sakura appeared in her mind. She looked exactly like Sakura, except she was in inverted colors, the gray body color with white lines. She had wide eyes and kanji of inner Sakura on her large forehead. Pumping her fist in the air, inner Sakura shouted, When love is eternal, even God bends its rules. Natsumi was grinning. She was happy. She was placed on the same team as her brother and mother. They were going to be together most of the time and she might be able to reconnect with her brother. It appeared that the only ones satisfied with the team were girls. Naruto suddenly stood up from his seat and started to walk toward the exit, shocking many students. Where are you going, Naruto? Iruka asked. Naruto was a real mystery, not just to him but everyone. Nobody could guess what was going through his mind. It's obvious. I'm leaving, Naruto said, stopping in his tracks. What about your team meeting? One of my sensei is Kakashi. You're already aware of his reputation. I'd rather use this time for training than sit here and do nothing. Naruto took a few steps toward the door. And please, tell my teachers I'm outside, one of the academy training ground, he said before he walked out of the classroom and closed the door behind him. Oh, within an hour, all the teams were picked up by their sensei with the exception of Team 7. They were sitting in the classroom and waiting for their own sensei to pick them up. So I'm on the same team with a worthless fangirl and the fourth Hokage's children. At least they won't be a total waste of space like her. Sasuke glanced at Sakura before looking at Natsumi. He then thought about her brother. And I've someone who can possibly challenge me. Let's just hope that this Hitake and the fourth's wife can teach me useful things. Things that can help me against him. Meanwhile, with Natsumi, the girl was thinking about her current team. Okay, I'm with mom, Naruto Nichan, and Kakashi Oni-san. Thank you dad, but... She looked at Sasuke and then Sakura. But why did you put the class emo and his fangirl on my team? Sure, I can put up being with the Uchiha. But Sakura. I don't like her. Where are they? Sakura cried having gotten sick of waiting. She was just trying to vent some of her frustration from waiting as well as having Sasuke neglecting her the whole time. Sakura, please keep your voice down, Natsumi said, rubbing her ears. Being Jinchuriki, she had heightened senses, which were sometimes pain in the ass to deal with. Kakashi was my father's student. He's always late for at least two hours, and it is a common belief that Kakashi Hitake will be late for his own funeral. Both Sakura and Sasuke stared down at her as if she had grown a second head. A tick mark appeared on Natsumi's face. It's true, but don't worry, my mom can handle him. As Natsumi finished the sentence, twin puff of smoke erupted in the room drawing their attention to it. When they cleared, both Jounin appeared in front of them. The first one was Kushina Uzumaki, wearing the standard uniform which consisted of a simple black suit with a standard flak jacket, black pant, strapped up sandals and leaf forehead protector on her head. Her long red hair was tied back into a ponytail with bangs both sides of her face. Their attention went toward the man standing next to her. This man was Kakashi Hatake. His hair was not white but had more of a silvery hue to it. He wore the regular attire of anyone in the regular forces of the leaf. On his hands were short, metal-plated gloves, he wore his forehead protector on a simple navy blue band, tilted to the left to cover his left eye and half of his face was covered by a navy blue mask. Yo! Kakashi greeted them with waving his hand. Sorry, we were late. We were lost on the road of life. Everyone's sweat dropped at his lame excuse. 
It was, of course, obvious that he was lying. Kakashi, Kushina shouted as she whacked him on the back of his head. You're the reason we're late. Sorry, Kushina senpai, Kakashi said, rubbing his head. She still hits hard. Kushina turned to her students and smiled. Anyway, Team 7. Er, where is Naruto-kun? She asked as she noticed the lack of their fourth student, her son. Naruto-ni-chan is outside, Natsumi answered her mother's question. Kushina nodded and said, let's go to get him. Both teachers put their hands on their future students' shoulders and disappeared in puffs of smoke. Oh, they all appeared in the Ninja Academy training ground. Both Sasuke and Sakura felt a little dizzy, but it began to fade. Unlike her teammates, Natsumi was perfectly fine. She had already gotten used to her father's The Flying Thunder God Jutsu, which was more powerful and faster than the Body Flicker Jutsu. It's just temporary. You'll get over it soon, Kushina said. Sasuke and Sakura nodded as they already started to feel good. What the hell has happened here? Natsumi shouted, catching others' attention toward her. They quickly followed the line of her gaze and saw the condition of the training ground. It was torn in many places, filled with numerous small holes, and cut marks. Interesting, Kakashi said watching Naruto practicing his Kenjutsu katas. The blonde boy's movements were fluid and quick, making him look almost like he was practicing some deadly dance. He is good. I didn't know he is this good in Kenjutsu, Kushina said in a slightly depressed tone. Kakashi couldn't help but feel sorry for her. Being close to the Hokage's family, he knew that the relationship between his sensei's family and Naruto was non-existent. Putting Kushina and Natsumi on the same team with Naruto, Minato was only trying to repair the relationship between them. He looked back at Naruto and couldn't help but think that the boy was the perfect example of a shinobi. He was intelligent, calculating, and secretive, but he was also dark and lonely. The primary qualities were good to have, but when connected to the last two, it could form a very dangerous combination. Best examples of that were Orochimaru and Itachi Uchiha. So what can I do for you? A voice caught everyone off guard. They quickly whirled around, looking back in the direction of the voice. They saw another Naruto standing on the top of a tree branch. What? Sakura shouted in disbelief. She turned back and saw the first Naruto still practicing his Kenjutsu katas. A clone? Sasuke guessed. No, Sasuke. It's a Genjutsu. Kakashi said. And a very good one. Correct, Naruto replied, as he jumped down from the tree and landed on the ground without making any sound. It's a Genjutsu. With that said, other Naruto in the training grounds faded from the view. Natsumi asked. But when did you cast it? A good shinobi never reveals his secrets, Naruto told her. He looked at their faces, both Natsumi and Sakura were looking at him with expressions of awe. Kushina was looking at him with a pride. Sasuke, he was staring at him with some jealousy as he realized just how strong he really was. He turned his head to Kakashi and saw no expression on his face. I really wanted to see his expression, Naruto though. Okay, you four, meet us on the roof in ten minutes. Kakashi said. Both teachers used the body flicker jutsu to disappear in puffs of smokes. Without saying anything to the others, Naruto turned himself into a pitch black smoke. The smoke dissolved into the air, leaving Sasuke, Natsumi, and Sakura alone in the training ground. See you guys up there, Natsumi said, as she ran toward the academy. After seeing this, Sasuke frowned, but he quickly decided to go up to the rooftop where he left the ground with Sakura following behind him. Oh, when Sasuke and Sakura arrived on the rooftop, they found Natsumi sitting on a stone bench. She was looking at the scene in front of her with an amused expression on her face. Kushina stood, holding up an orange book in her hand. In front of her was Kakashi, who was attempting to take the book away from Kushina. Finally, there was Naruto. He was leaning against the wall and reading his own book, ignoring everything that was going on around him. Please, Kushina-senpai. Kakashi said, kneeling in front of her. This is the first edition and sign the copy of Icha Icha Paradise. Kakashi, Kushina said, releasing a small amount of her killing intent. I'll burn you and your every book if I ever find you reading this trash in front of my children or students again. Got it? Kakashi gulped and gave a fearful nod. Good. She threw the book at him. She absolutely hated these perverted books her husband's teacher wrote. Kakashi quickly caught the book and put it in his flak jacket's pocket. He didn't want to make Kushina angry. The last time when he had made her angry, she had tied him up with a chakra suppressing rope and left him hanging upside down on the tree. The thought of that time still made chills run up and down his spine. He still had nightmares about it. Sakura and Sasuke sweat dropped. Is he really a jounin? They thought before they sat down next to Natsumi. Seeing drama was over, Naruto snapped his book close and took a seat next to Sasuke. Kakashi and Kushina sat on the steps, 
which were opposite side of their students. I think we should get to know each other better first. Let's start with telling your name, what you like, what you dislike, and your dreams for the future and your hobbies, Kakashi said, looking at his future students. How about you go first sensei so we know what we have to say, Sakura said to Kakashi. Alright then, I'm Kakashi Hatake. I have no desire to tell you my likes and dislikes, my dreams for the future. Hmm. As for my hobbies. I have lots of hobbies. The only thing we learned about him was his name, Sakura and Sasuke thought. Natsumi sweat dropped. Seriously, Kakashi Oniai-chan is too lazy to even tell about himself to others. As usual, Kakashi and his secretive attitude. Kushina knew that Kakashi didn't like people knowing too much about him. Kakashi Hitake, you are a very secretive person, aren't you? Naruto thought, carefully eyeing the silver-haired Jounin. Well then, please allow me to tell them about you, Naruto said catching everyone's attention on him. Listen carefully, because I'm not going to repeat myself. Kakashi Hitake is the son of Sakumo Hitake, a genius renowned as White Fang. At the mention of his father's name, Kakashi winced slightly. Naruto continued, he is a genius, a prodigy and the best of his generation. His prodigious talent, skill, and Sharingan prowess has made him one of the village's most capable ninja and recognized throughout the ninja world. Sharingan? Sasuke thought. This one word made him give all his attention to the blonde's words. Naruto continued, he is also the last living student of the fourth Hokage. His hobby is reading. Icha Icha series. Kushina glared at Kakashi for this, making him look away from her. His dream is to fight his sensei. His favorite foods are salt broiled sori and miso soup with eggplant while his least favorites are anything fried or sweet. He has completed 1141 official missions in total, 197 D rank, 190 C rank. 414 B rank, 298 A rank, 42 S rank, Naruto finished. There was complete silence. No one said a word. Kushina was smiling inside her mind. Looks like he has done some research on you Kakashi, she thought. Okay, Kakashi said. He hadn't expected something like this. There goes my plan making me look mysterious in front of students, he thought. However, there was something bugging him. Where did you get all this information? He asked. Most of the things that Naruto said weren't entirely secret, but neither was it common knowledge. Naruto smirked. It's my hobby to gather information on every famous ninja and you're quite famous in ninja world, copy ninja Kakashi. The man who has copied over a thousand jutsu. All three remaining students stared at Kakashi incredulously after hearing that he knew a thousand jutsu with their jaw hanging open. D thousand jutsu? Sakura sputtered out, being the first one to snap out of the shock. Kakashi sighed and ignored her completely. It is truly a good hobby. It will certainly help you in future, he said to Naruto. Hey, Natsumi shouted, catching their attention toward her. She pointed her finger in Kakashi direction. Why didn't you tell me about this? She asked. She had always thought of him as a lazy man, but the thought of him being a genius never even crossed her mind. Well, Kakashi said, you never asked. Hearing this, Natsumi's face faulted. Kushina let out a small laugh, seeing the expression on her daughter's face. Anyway. It's my turn now, she said, gaining her all students attention toward her. My name is Kushina Uzumaki. I love my husband and children. Naruto scoffed when she mentioned children. My likes are ramen particularly salt ramen and playing pranks on people. My dislikes are perverts, people who make fun of my hair, coffee and anything bitter. My hobbies are pulling pranks, chatting with my friends and cooking. As for my dream, my dream is. She glanced at Naruto. I want to see my complete family once again. Only Kakashi and Natsumi caught the hidden meaning behind Kushina's words, as they knew what she meant. Kakashi said, Okay, Natsumi you are next. My name is Natsumi Uzumaki. I like my family, my friends, ramen and learning new jutsu. My hobbies are eating ramen, playing with my friends, and trying new justice. I dislike traitor, perverts and anyone who harm my family or friends. My dream is to help my mother to achieve her dream. Hearing it, a small smile appeared on Kushina's face. And I want to become the first female Hokage. She cried out the final part, pumping his fist in the air. A huge sweat drop appeared on the back of Kakashi's head. She is a mini Kushina in the team. He pointed at Sakura who was sitting next to Natsumi. You're next, Pinky, he said, which caused Sakura to scowl. My name is Sakura Haruno. My likes are. She glanced at Sasuke. My hobbies are playing trivia games and... She looked at Sasuke again with a slight blush on her face. My dislikes are Eno Pig along with Emi and her gang. My dreams for the future. Kya. 
she screamed in the excitement of what could happen between her and Sasuke in the future. Sasuke slightly moved away from her. He didn't want to stay too much closer to his number one fangirl. Can't she see I am not interested in her? He thought before shivering as he remembered his last night's dream. That wasn't a dream. That was a nightmare. Naruto just shook his head and ignored her. In short, her dream, hobby, and everything are linked to Sasuke, he thought. Natsumi also ignored her. Sakura likes Sasuke was generally known thing in the academy. DCH, typical Sakura and her obsession towards Sasuke. Kushina and Kakashi cursed their luck. They looked straight at each other and nodded, knowing what they had to do. Kakashi looked at Sasuke and said, Okay then, you're next broody over there. Sasuke only scowled slightly at Kakashi's nickname. My name is Uchiha Sasuke. I hate a lot of things, and I don't particularly like anything. What I have is not a dream, because I will make it a reality. I'm going to restore my clan, and kill a certain man. Could someone just tell this guy to lighten up a little? Rather than brooding and thinking darkly all the time, there are many things he can do, Natsumi thought. Mikoto-chan, I was worried about this. It appears that loss of the Uchiha clan has made your son hung up on revenge. Kushina looked up at the sky, remembering her late friend, Sasuke's mother. If he keeps going down this path, it will only lead more sorrow for him and everyone around him. Let's hope we can save him before it's too late. Kakashi sighed, as he knew he and Kushina had a lot of work to do. Naruto sneered. Idiot. Revenge has blinded him from seeing the power gap between him and his brother. Itachi is a prodigy and genius. Running after him without any strategy and power will only kill him. There was only one person, whose thought was separate from the others and it was Sakura. She had a dreamy look on her face. Sasuke-kun is so cold. And now, last but not least, Mr. Rookie of the Year, Kakashi said, looking directly at Naruto. Naruto began saying, My name is Naruto. Kakashi raised his eyebrow at his lack of using his last name. It's worse than I thought. Kushina looked down, so no one could see her expression on her face. He doesn't even consider himself as a part of the family, she thought. Naruto continued, I like and hate many things. My hobby. You already know it I don't like repeating myself. My dream, I want to become the best. Kakashi looked at all his students one by one. Well, I have a mini Kushina, a fangirl, an Avenger, and a boy with deep family issues. He turned his head toward Kushina. She had a cheerful smile on her face to hide her hurt expression, and nodded. I think it's time to tell you about the test, Kushina said, surprising everyone, except Naruto. But mom, Natsumi. Natsumi, you're not home, Kushina interrupted. Here, I am your sensei, so call me sensei or Kushina sensei. Understand? Why yes, mo Kushina sensei, Natsumi said, quickly correcting her mistake. But what kind of test? We already had our test. Kakashi chuckled out loud. What's so funny sensei? Sakura asked with an annoyed expression. Well, if I say this, I'm sure you four are going to be surprised, Kakashi said with an eye smile. Out of all the graduates this year, only a few are going to become real Janan, and will stay as teams while remaining will be sent back to the academy. In other words, this test is going to be very hard with a dropout rate of 66%, Kushina explained. This means there is 34% chance of success. That's enough for me, Naruto said in a confident tone. Everyone turned toward him and looked him for a minute in silence. What? Naruto asked, annoyed. Hmm, nothing, Natsumi said. Anyway, meet us tomorrow at training ground 3 at 9 a.m. sharp, Kushina said. Kakashi said, oh, and a word of advice, don't eat breakfast, you'll just throw up. And don't be late, Kushina said. She glared at Kakashi. Which applies to you as well, Kakashi. Why yes Kushina senpai. Kakashi nodded fearfully. Both Kakashi and Kushina said goodbye to their students and disappeared in twin puffs of smoke. Naruto stood up from his seat and began to walk. Suddenly, stopping dead in his tracks, he turned his head toward his teammates and said, Take my advice, don't take Kakashi's advice. Before anyone asked him any question, Naruto had already gone from there. What does it mean? Sakura asked. Sasuke answered her, I don't know. Goodbye, Natsumi said as she began to walk away from the group of two as well. Once Natsumi left, Sakura turned to Sasuke. Sasuke-kun, would you like to go out for dinner? She asked hopefully. No, Sasuke replied simply. He left the roof to go home and train. Sakura wasn't going to give up easily. She followed him to convince him to have dinner with her. Oh, next day, in the training ground 3, Natsumi, Sakura and Sasuke were waiting for their both sensei and their last teammate to show up for their test for the last 15 minutes. At 9am sharp, in a swirl of leaves, Kushina appeared in front of them. Good, 
you all are in time, but where are Kakashi and Naruto-kun? She asked, noticing their absence. Suddenly, there was a puff of smoke next to Kushina and Kakashi appeared there. Checking his clock, he sighed in relief. Yo, he said, greeting Team 7 and Kushina. Kakashi? Kushina said in a surprised tone. She looked Kakashi and then quickly checked the time. She looked up at Kakashi again and checked for any genjutsu. She found it nothing. You're on time, because I do not wish to die, Kakashi muttered under his breath. Did you want to say something, Kakashi? Kushina asked dangerously as she narrowed her eyes at him. Nothing, Kushina senpai. Good, Kakashi sighed in relief. Anyway, where is Naruto? He asked, when he saw only Natsumi, Sakura and Sasuke present there. I'm here. A voice came behind Kakashi, causing him to move around in surprise. The silver-haired man's eye winded when he saw Naruto. How the hell did he sneak up on me? He observed the pale blonde-haired boy. Is he really that good, or am I just losing my touch? Both things are troubling me. Alright everyone, here is the test, Kushina said, getting everyone's attention. Kakashi. Oh well, Kakashi said. He walked over three stumps wooden posts and put a clock on it. Your task is getting a bell from Kakashi before noon. Kushina said. Kakashi pulled out three bells from his ninja pouch. Those that don't get a bell, will be tied to one of the wooden posts, she pointed at wooden posts, and will eat lunch in front of them. Oh, and we'll be sending you back to the academy. Sasuke glared at Kakashi. So telling us not to eat breakfast, was for this. Sakura held her grumbling stomach. Thank goddess, I took Naruto Nichan's advice. Natsumi smiled. She had eaten a lunch before coming here for the test. Why are there only three bells if there are four of us? Sakura said. Well, Sakura, this way we can send at least one of you back to the academy, Kakashi said with a smug smile. So come at me with the intent to kill. Begin. Four figures, three Janan and one Jounan, blurred out of existence while one stayed there. Kakashi sweat dropped. Ah, uh, Naruto the test has begun. He sent a curious glance at the young boy. They're good, but they can be better. Sasuke and Natsumi are up in the trees while Sakura is under the foliage. Even though I'm standing next to him, I can barely sense Naruto's presence. He's good. A truly a prodigy as academy teachers said. I know, Naruto replied, the sound of his voice calm. But I wanna say, this is an interesting method to test teamwork. Both Kakashi and Kushina, she was hiding behind a tree to observe her and Kakashi's future students, were surprised by this. It was the first time someone had found out the true meaning of the bell test. He got your quick analyzing mind, Minato-kun, Kushina thought. A small smile appeared on her lips. So he figured out the meaning behind my test, impressive, Kakashi thought without taking his eye from the boy. So what are you going to do, Naruto? He asked. Naruto smiled and said, for now. Nothing. Suddenly, Kakashi felt something in the air like something was off. A genjutsu, he muttered. He made a hand seal. Kai. He watched Naruto in front of him faded away, showing that he had been taken with an illusion. Kakashi smiled under his mask. Minato-sensei, your son is good. Oh, Natsumi was up on the tree, looking at Kakashi. Okay, think Natsumi. There are only three bells, and we need them before noon to pass the test. However, against an experienced Jounin like Kakashi, this is pretty much impossible for fresh out of the academy Jinan like us, she thought. And why are there only three bells? Her eyes widened as she remembered something. In our line of work, teamwork is the most important factor for the success of a mission, Minato had said to 10 years old Natsumi. Those bells are used to put us against each other. They want to see if we can work out our differences and work together. Natsumi smiled as she finally put all clues together. She closed her eyes in a deep breath, just trying to calm her nerves. Okay, I know Sakura is under the bushes on my right, and Sasuke is on a tree on my left. But where's Naruto Nichan? Suddenly, a scream caught her attention. She acted quickly. Jumping off the tree, she ran toward bushes, in the direction she assumed the voice had come from. Upon arriving there, Natsumi saw an unconscious Sakura lying on the ground. She instantly ran toward her, knelt down beside her, and checked her condition. A genjutsu, she told to herself. Placing her front finger on Sakura's forehead, she pumped a small bit of chakra into her. After a few seconds, Sakura's eyes quickly fluttered open. Sasuke K, she cried out. Haruno, shut up, Natsumi said. She had covered Sakura's mouth to stop her from shouting and giving their position away to Kakashi. Whatever you saw earlier, it wasn't real. It was a genjutsu. For God's sake, keep your voice down. After receiving a positive response from Sakura, she removed her hand from her mouth. Okay Haruno, I think I have figured out the meaning behind the test and I, 
she said before she was interrupted by Sakura. Why should I help you? Sakura asked quietly. But, go away. I only need Sasuke-kun, Sakura said, interrupting her again. She got up and left to find her Sasuke-kun. Natsumi got angry. Era. Stupid fangirl. I'm beginning to see why mom hates them so much, she said to herself. She looked around. Now, where is that emo? Oh, I'm not like the others, Sasuke said. Hmm. Let us see after you get the bell, Sasuke-kun, Kakashi said, giving him a nice smile. Sasuke spun his kunai around his index finger. He then gripped the kunai tightly in his hand before he sprinted forward. Kakashi dodged his attempt and knocked the kunai out of his grip. He then threw some punch toward Kakashi, forcing the jounin to look away from his book. The Uchiha pulled another kunai and threw it at Kakashi, who jumped to the side to dodge them. There's no use in just using normal attacks, the silver-haired jounin said lazily. Sasuke smirked. The kunai he had thrown cut a rope, activating a trap. Several shurikens flew toward Kakashi's direction. A trap? Kakashi said as he slid along the ground, making shuriken to hit a tree that next to him. He jumped up and stood on his feet. Sasuke went behind Kakashi and kicked him. The Exonbu blocked the kick with both of his hand protecting his chest. Sasuke twisted his body downward. His finger faintly brushed the bell, making it rang. Kakashi's eyes widened and he forcefully pushed the Uchiha away from him before jumping backwards. I gave you that, you are not like the other. And Sasuke smirked. The cocky boy formed hand seals, ending with a horse and tiger sign. He inhaled deeply. Fire release. Grand Fireball Jutsu. Kakashi's lone eye winded. What? A Janan shouldn't have enough chakra to do this. Sasuke put his right hand to his mouth and exhaled. He blew out a massive amount of fire out of his mouth. The fire moved rapidly towards Kakashi and left him no time to dodge. Sasuke smirked before he swiped his nose with his thumb. When the fire cleared, there was no burning Kakashi in sight. He gasped and glanced wildly. Where did he go? Behind me? No. Above. Where is he? He said to himself, frustrated as he lost Kakashi. I'm where you least expect me to be. Kakashi's voice came from under the ground. That's was when Sasuke felt someone grab his ankles. Wah! The boy's eyes widened in fear and disbelief as he stared at Kakashi's hands. Earth style, underground hunter jutsu. Within seconds, Sasuke was buried deep underground, leaving only his head above the ground. Kakashi got up from the ground and crouched down looking at the boy. Kakashi stood up and he turned and walked away. He said good try. Your talents are exceptional, but not good enough. Kakashi opened the book in the middle and walked away from the Uchiha. Oh! Kakashi stopped looked up at Natsumi from the book. I was wondering when you would come out, he said. Sorry, I just had to get you alone, Natsumi said, getting into her taijutsu stance. Well, then come at me with the intent to kill, Kakashi said in a lazy tone. Oh! After getting his ass kicked by Kakashi. A humiliated Sasuke Uchiha was struggling to get out of the ground. Natsumi came out from behind one of the surrounding trees. Hello Sasuke, how are you doing down there? She asked. The last Uchiha glared at her while trying to get out of the ground even harder than before. If you want I can help you. Go away, idiot. Uchiha elite like me doesn't need your help, Sasuke replied with an arrogant tone. A tick mark appeared on Natsumi's forehead. Then go to hell. She shouted before disappearing in a puff of smoke. From her hiding spot, behind a tree, Kushina saw everything. So, Natsumi-chan has also found out a true meaning behind the test. Oh, damn arrogant bastard. I guess I have to wing it, Natsumi cursed under her breath when a clone's memory suddenly surged into her mind. She ran toward Kakashi and tried to kick him only to miss. He's fast. She spun around him throwing a punch toward Kakashi only for the jown and to block it, for a few minutes. Kakashi was blocking and dodging Natsumi's strikes. Natsumi saw a small opening, but just before she could take advantage of it, Kakashi blocked the strike by catching Natsumi's elbow with his left hand. In an impressive feat of flexibility and agility, Natsumi pushed herself away from Kakashi. Let's do it, she said, making a single hand seal. Shadow Clone Jutasu. Four clones of the girl appeared in a cloud of smoke and surrounded Kakashi. They all charged at him. Kakashi dodged their attacks without any difficulty. Shadow clones, wasn't expecting that from a Janan. He went and started dispelling all her clones, trying to find the real Natsumi. When all clones puffed out, he found the real Natsumi. Are you done yet? He asked. Kakashi's danger sense went off. He turned around just in time to see a dozen shuriken flying toward him. He quickly dodged all lethal weapons. He looked up to meet his attacker. Naruto. Hello, Kakashi-sensei, 
Naruto said standing on top of a tree branch. Naruto jumped off the tree and fell on the ground in a crouch. Immediately after that, a wave of black chakra chains erupted from the ground, causing Kakashi to curse. The fourth student leapt back and began dodging all chains. So rumors are true. He inherited the special chakra from Kushina, Kakashi thought while trying to dodge the black chains. Natsumi watched the scene before her with pure awe. She had never seen anything like it before. She knew her mother could use chakra chains like her brother, but she never saw her using it. Wow. That's so cool. I wish I could do that. This is taking us nowhere, Naruto said, retreating all chain except one back into his body. I guess it's time to take it up a notch then. He smirked, amplified the amount of chakra in the chain, said the chain completely enveloped in white flames. From her hiding spot, Kushina's eyes widened, seeing her son's mastery over his chains. He can even add his element affinity into them, she thought. Shit. Kakashi cursed when he saw Naruto aiming his flaming chain at him. Kakashi narrowly dodged that deadly attack, but it stuck in the tree behind him. The tree exploded into splinters as if it hit with a giant flaming rock. He kept dodging the flaming chain as Naruto kept whipping it at him. I grow tired of these games, Naruto said. Faster than before, he whipped his chain at Kakashi. It hit Kakashi, but he exploded into a puff of smoke. A shadow clone? He felt a kunai pressed up against his neck. Well Naruto, I have to admit it is impressive, but it's still no good if you're not fast enough to land a hit on me, Kakashi said. I admit her good, sensei, Naruto said, but I'm still better. Boom. Without warning, Naruto exploded in a massive explosion. Fortunately, Kakashi was able to evade the blast. Damn it. He knows clone great explosion. Kakashi got out of the smoke. Unfortunately, for him, two Naruto waited for him. They attacked him with a flurry of punches and kicks. The Jounin continued to dodge attacks. As Kakashi felt something touched his belt, he jumped back and he started in shock seeing another Naruto holding three bells in his hand. Naruto's clone smirked, but he wasn't able to hold bells much longer as another Kakashi appeared behind him, dispelled him with a punch in the gut and caught bells before they could hit the ground. All Naruto moved away from both Kakashi. They got back into their taijutsu stance. They all were willing to fight once again. But the alarm clock rang, signaling the end of the bell test. The time is up, Naruto, Kakashi said. You failed to get a bell from me. No comments, the real Naruto said as his all clones exploded into clouds of smoke. Come with me, Kakashi said. He dispelled his clone and pulled out another orange book. They walked in silence and came where three stumps lined side by side. Kushina, Natsumi, Sakura and Sasuke were already there. Naruto took a place next to the post on the side of Sasuke while Kakashi stood next to Kushina. He had already put his book back in his pocket, knowing Kushina would skin him alive if she saw him with the book. I watched all of you and I believe that there are no reasons for any of you to go back to the academy, Kushina said, carefully looking at each Shinan. Sasuke smirked. Sakura cheered, beaming, considering she had done an excellent job. Natsumi narrowed her eyes at her mother, not believing her. Naruto didn't show any visible reaction. Instead of we think you should stop being a ninja, Kushina added in a cold voice. Kakashi nodded his head in agreement. Sasuke's smirk was replaced by anger. Sakura's beaming smile switched to disbelief. The twins didn't show any reaction. Kakashi asked, do you know the true meaning of the test? What? What's meaning? I thought we only had to get a bell, Sakura asked. The teamwork, Natsumi said. Sasuke and Sakura stared at her. She is correct, Kushina said. Individual skill is important to a ninja, but what's even more important is teamwork. Sakura, she pointed at the pink-haired girl, instead of accepting Natsumi's help, you were only thinking about Sasuke, who was far away from you. She turned to Sasuke. And you, Sasuke, you slapped away Natsumi's offer of help and dismissed her advice without listening. She looked straight at Kakashi, who nodded his head, as he knew the strained relationship between her and Naruto. Therefore, it was up to him to tell Naruto his faults. Kakashi turned to Naruto and said, Naruto, you knew the meaning behind my test from the beginning. Nevertheless, instead of assisting them, you just chose to watch them. Why? Because unlike someone, I didn't want to waste my time, Naruto said, looking Natsumi from the corner of his eye. Kakashi narrowed his lone eye at the blonde. Naruto, you are a shinobi of the leaf, and here, we value teamwork and friendship. I don't believe in them, Kakashi. They are meaningless to me. It makes you weak and makes you make stupid decisions, I will not be weak. Kakashi looked at his sensei's son. The mask was hiding his surprise expression very well. He is colder than Sasuke. However, I already know the benefits of a team and teamwork, Naruto finished. Nonetheless, it's good to know unlike Sasuke, 
he is willing to work as a team. Kakashi sighed in relief, and Kakashi Sensei, Naruto called, catching Kakashi's attention again. I think those are yours. Pulling out something from his pocket, he threw it at him. Kakashi quickly caught it. To his surprise, it was three bells. Quickly, reaching his belt, he saw his bells disappearing in a puff of smoke. But how? He asked Naruto, our teamwork. It was Natsumi who answered his question. A few minutes before, Natsumi had watched the scene before her with pure awe, she'd never seen anything like that. She knew her mother can use chakra chains, but she never saw her using it. Wow. That's so cool. I wish I could do that. She was impressed by his display. However, he can't do it all alone, I'll have to help him. Before she could do something, a familiar voice stopped her. Don't do anything stupid. Natsumi turned around and came to face with another Naruto. Naruto, do you want to pass the test? Naruto asked, cutting her off. Yes. Then follow my lead, Naruto had said. Then I waited for the right moment and swapped bells with my clones, Natsumi explained, smiling brightly. If the other Jounin finds out about this, they will never let me live peacefully. Kakashi shivered just thinking about it. But how is this possible? I was watching you the entire time, Kushina asked her daughter. You were there standing in front of me, all alone. What you saw was nothing more than an illusion, a genjutsu that I placed upon you, Naruto answered. Well, that was a great plan, but since you have one extra bell, what are you going to do with it? Kakashi asked, looking at the twins. Taking bells from Kakashi's hand, Natsumi threw the two bells toward Sasuke and Sakura each. I'm giving them two bells, she showed her last bell to Kakashi, and I'm sharing this last bell with Naruto Nichan. Kakashi gave her a deadpan look. What? You didn't say that we couldn't share a bell. She has a point, Kakashi, Kushina said, smiling. You forgot to say that, Kakashi sighed. Well, then I guess I have just one thing left to say that, he said, looking at all his students as he took a dramatic pause, you all pass. Hearing it, Sakura began cheering out happily, but it quickly ended, when Kushina spoke in a serious tone. I don't know why you are so happy, Sakura. The entire exam, you didn't do anything. Sakura looked at down in shame as she realized it was quite true. This is not some game, Sakura. Death is a common thing in the ninja world. Do you understand? Sakura nodded. Good. Now, you all are officially Team 7, Kakashi declared. It seems I didn't need to use backup plan, Naruto muttered under his breath, but Sasuke clearly heard him as he was standing close to him. Backup plan? Sasuke asked. You had a backup plan? Remaining four heads turned slowly in Naruto's direction. Well, Yes, Naruto admitted as he held up a piece of paper with a seal neatly written on it. This was my backup plan. Hmm, interesting, Kushina said as she began to examine the seal. She was a few Injutsu master and a Nuzumaki after all. It is a basic trigger seal uses to detonate one or many explosive tags. Sakura's face turned ash and white as a thought came into her mind. Please, do not say you have planted explosive tags all around training ground? She asked, looking around to find them. She was also carefully watching her footing. She didn't want to accidentally activate any tags. Her statement caught everyone off guard. Explosive tags were a dangerous ninja tool, don't worry. I've not planted any explosive tags here, Naruto said, causing everyone to sigh in relief. I've planted them into Kakashi's home, especially all over his favorite books. You've done, what? Kakashi shouted when his statement finally sank into his mind. What did you think I was doing when you were busy with testing others? I went to your home and slapped explosive tags everywhere, especially on your all books. Everyone knows they are your weakness, Naruto said. If my original plan had failed, then I would have used those tags to force you to pass us. There was an absolute silence as everyone absorbed the information that Naruto had revealed. Kakashi quickly made the necessary hand seals for the body flicker jutsu and disappeared in a puff of smoke. What the hell just happened to him? Natsumi asked. He didn't even say goodbye. Kushina shook her head. He's gone to his home to save his precocious books, she said with disgust. Sakura looked at Naruto and asked, was your backup plan really necessary? Sakura, not everything always goes the way we planned, Naruto said. That's why having a backup plan set before anything goes wrong is one of the most important tasks. Okay, Team 7, pay attention, Kushina said aloud to gain her students' attention on her. Meet me here tomorrow same time, same place. You're all dismissed except Natsumi and Naruto. Hmm. Sasuke said. He turned around and walked away slowly while his loyal fangirl followed behind him. Natsumi sighed as she watched Sakura following Sasuke like she always did. She will never change. What do you want? Naruto asked coldly after he made sure Sasuke and Sakura left.
Kushina said, Naruto-kun, I, if you want to speak about earlier, then don't bother, Naruto said, cutting her off. As a leaf shinobi, I helped her. There wasn't anything personal. Naruto-kun, listen to me, Kushina said. I want to talk about your chakra chains. What about them? You have already seen it, I don't your help. I'm much better at using them than you. I can see that Kushina admitted. But how did you add your element affinity in them? I tried it with my water affinity, but it didn't end well. Did she just ask my advice? Naruto thought as he just stood there confused. He had never seen anything like that coming. He had half expected she would ask him about his chains but not this. He shook his head to clear his thought. Well, your answer is always front of you, Naruto said. He turned around and took a few steps forward. With each step he took, tendrils of black smoke began to dance beneath his feet, gathering and coming apart unnaturally. Your chakra control. You need a very good chakra control to make chains using your element affinity. While too much chakra will break your chains, the low chakra will make them weak. The balance is the only way. It's very difficult to control. I can only add my element affinity into a single chain. Black smoke warped around Naruto and slowly started to dissolve into the air, leaving no trace of him behind. Mom, Natsumi said. She literally had stars in her eyes. Yes, Natsumi-chan, Kushina said, staring right at her daughter. When are you going to teach me the body flicker jutsu? I want to do that. She pointed at a place that had been occupied by her brother. Kushina sweat dropped. Kids nowadays seem to focus more on flashy jutsu rather than getting the job done. Oh, the following night, together the Uzumaki family was celebrating the success of their children. It was only a little celebration, both Minato and Kushina had brought some gifts for their children. Congratulations on being a Jinan, Natsumi, Minato said as he handed a small box, packed in green cloth. Natsumi unwrapped the gift and then opened the box, causing her eyes to go wide. Inside was a three-pointed kunai. You're going to teach me the Flying Thunder God Jutsu, she shouted with joy and excitement. Minato scratched the back of his head nervously. He didn't want to burst her bubble, but it had to be undertaken. Sorry, Princess, I can't teach you the Jutsu yet. You do have chakra to use it many times, but don't have enough control to use it correctly, he pointed the three-pointed kunai that she was holding in her hand, it is just a little extra insurance, only to use it in case of an emergency. Natsumi nodded, placing her father's kunai safely into the weapon pouch. She moved and gave Minato a hug. Thanks even though it's lame, she said, murmuring the last part under her breath. She released her father from the hug and looked straight at him with a hopeful expression. Hey, Dad, can you teach me the body flicker jutsu? She asked. Maybe, Minato said. What's wrong with kids these days? They prefer flashy jutsu over basics, he thought. This one is for me, Kushina said, giving her gift to her. It was long and wrapped in a red cloth. Please, tell me, it isn't a demon wind shuriken? Natsumi asked after examining its size and length. No, my gift is not lame as Minato's, Kushina said. Minato's eye twitched in annoyance as he screamed in his mind. My gift is not lame. It's for her safety. Natsumi unwrapped Kushina's gift. Inside the long, black box laid the most beautiful ninjato. It had a black sheath and blood red hilt. On the hilt was carved a mythological bird, phoenix with the Uzumaki clan swirl in between its both wings. Natsumi removed the ninjato from its sheath. Her eyes moved over the blade to examine its beauty. The blade was thin, an elegant looking, razor sharp and deadly. She traced the kanji of will of fire carved into the blade with her fingers. Do you like it? Kushina asked, smiling. Natsumi had lost an eyeing the beauty of the sword. Yeah, she said. She gave his sword a few practice swings to get a feel for the weapon and found Ninjato was perfect for her hand. I love it. I knew you would love it. Thank mom. Natsumi sheathed her sword, moved forward and hugged her mother happily. Kushina wrapped her arms around her daughter and gave her a hug in return. I believe that you are fully ready to learn Kenjutsu, she said, releasing Natsumi from the hug. Thank you, Natsumi said, but what about Naruto Nichan? Don't worry, Natsumi, we also have gifts for him, Minato said, smiling. Anyway, where is he? Natsumi answered, I think he's in his room. Suddenly, they heard faint footsteps. They turned around to see Naruto. Minato smiled at his son. Naruto, I have, however, he cut himself off when he saw him carrying a backpack. Where are you going? I'm leaving your home forever, Naruto said, making his way toward the front door. What? Kushina shouted, a tear forming in the corner of her eye and slowly falling down her face. Naruto, this is your home, Minato said, trying to persuade his son. Naruto stopped in front of the door and turned slightly to look at Minato. It's your home, Hokage-sama, not mine, 
he said, Naruto, I forbid you from getting out of this house, Minato ordered. You can't stop me from leaving, Hokage-sama. I'm not a child you can order around any longer. Naruto answered him back. According to the village law, after wearing a headband that shows my status as a ninja, a Janan is considered an adult. There's nothing you can do now. With that, Naruto exited the house, leaving his saddened family behind. Oh, Naruto stepped out of the Uzumaki house's compound and took a deep breath, savoring the air of freedom. At last, he had been able to free himself from all watchful eyes of his family. A former family. They had been a major obstacle in his path. It was time to start formulating his master plan. The blonde boy gathered some chakra into his feet and jumped to the next rooftop. He landed there in a crouch and then started jumping from roof to roof towards his new apartment. After jumping from one roof to another for several minutes, he slowed down when he came near his new place. He took a big jump and swiftly landed on the balcony. Naruto took a few steps forward, but something stopped him. His eyes drifted over to a small, dark empty space between the two buildings. He shook his head before returning his eyes back to the door. He withdrew a key from his pocket to unlock the door. So Minato sent his pets to keep eyes on me, the boy thought as he pushed the door open and walked in. Naruto closed the door, turned the doorknob and channeled his chakra. A seal array materialized over the door, securing the whole apartment from unwanted eyes. He looked around. He had gotten everything he'd need in the small apartment. It had a small kitchen, a bathroom, and a bed. So this is your new home, one of the white Zetsu's clones said emerging from the apartment's wooden flooring. But it's quite small, isn't it? It's not like I'm going to spend my whole life here, Naruto said, taking his backpack off from his back, and placing it on the ground. He took the black cloak out and pulled it over his head. Get ready. We're going. Naruto looked at a spot occupied by his sofa with his heterochromy eyes. A small crack formed in the space as a time-space portal opened. It got bigger and bigger in a few seconds, big enough to enter two people. Naruto stepped into the portal with the white Zetsu's clone following just behind him. Exactly half minutes after they had entered the first portal, Naruto and Zetsu's clone stepped out of the second portal. They had teleported to very familiar place. The Valley of the End, Naruto said. It was the place, where the legendary two, Madara Uchiha and Hashirama Sanju, had their final battle. The two had torn the earth itself apart and created the valley. The battle had ended with Hashirama victorious, Madara secretly escaping his death and going into hiding, and the nine-tailed fox being sealed within Hashirama wife, Mito Uzumaki. Naruto was standing on top of Madara's statue's head and looking at Hashirama's status. The statues of the two great shinobi had been built to memorialize that battle, with Hashirama on the side of the land of fire and Madara standing in opposition to symbolize his defection from the leaf village. Both were stood in the traditional shinobi sparring seal of confrontation a protocol before engaging in a formal duel. The waterfall flowing in between both statues was serving as a border between the land of fire and the land known as the land of sound. Naruto ran vertically down on Madara's statue and landed on the surface of the water. Moving towards the waterfall, he made some hand seals before slamming hands on the surface of the water. A blood-red seal materialized on the water surface. The water from the waterfall split into two, revealing a pitch-black hidden passage. Aha! One of Madara's secret hideouts. The white Zetsu said, as he emerged next to him. Yes, but now, it's our secret base, Naruto said as he stepped inside. Zetsu chuckled and followed the blonde. They continued walking in the dark passage. When they finally came to the end, they found the large room. The moment they had entered, several seals had activated, illuminating a huge room. Naruto saw various weapons, a few hundred scrolls and books. They were everywhere, stacked vertically and horizontally in wooden shelves and cases. Naruto went forward, pulled one book from one of a shelf, and read its title. Uzumaki Clan's Secret Few in Jutsu. Interesting, he told himself, putting the book back in its place. So you have finally come here. Naruto quickly turned around and saw the person he had expected to see there. DBC. Omake. Sasuke was walking in a forest near the border of the Land of Fire. He was not exactly a kid anymore. He had grown up into a tall and handsome man, but he still had duck butt hairstyle. He was dressed in the standard uniform of the Leaf Anbu with an Injato strap to his back. He was the deepest part of the forest to search Itachi. Today I'm going to destroy you Itachi, Sasuke said as he jumped from tree to tree, searching for any sign of his brother. His Sharingan eyes narrowed when he saw a black cloaked figure standing near a tree. Found you, Itachi. He accelerated and landed in front of his brother. Itachi. Itachi turned around and looked at Sasuke with his emotionless Sharingan eyes. Sasuke looked at his brother and clenched his fist. They both bore similarities to one another in terms of their appearance. 
They both had same onyx eyes, jet black hair and skin tone, but that was where their similarity ended. Itachi's hair was pulled back with the red elastic in a low ponytail, which extended his shoulder blades, and his eyes, they were cold and emotionless. They were looking right at him. Hello, my foolish little brother, Itachi stated in an emotionless tone. His Sharingan started to spin amazingly fast. I'm not little anymore. Sasuke glared directly at Itachi, his Sharingan also spinning rapidly. I've heard you got married and became a father, foolish brother, Itachi said. It's none of your business, Itachi, Sasuke said. He gritted his teeth angrily as he glared hard at his brother. Ten years ago, the council had forced him to marry his teammate, Sakura. One year after their wedding, Sakura had become pregnant and given birth to his twin sons. Sasuke shook his head. It isn't time thinking about it, he thought, not taking his eyes off his brother. Less talking, more fighting, Itachi, he said, coming into the fighting stance. Today I'm going to finish you. Very well, foolish little brother. However, before they could make a move, two blurs landed in between them. Itachi raised his eyebrow when he saw two nine-years-old twin boys. They both had weird features. Dad, one boy said, looking at Sasuke. We've come to help you. His twin brother nodded in head agreement. Dad? Itachi said. Itachi starred at both boys. They had Sharingan spinning in their eyes, and both of them had pink hair. Pink hair? Itachi blinked. He immediately tried to dispel any Genjutsu that might be affecting him but accomplished nothing even after he flared his chakra. He looked at Sasuke and then his pink-haired sons. He again looked straight at his brother before looking back at twin pink-haired boys. Then he did something. Something Sasuke had never expected that Itachi would ever do. Itachi laughed. Itachi laughed really hard. So hard that he fell to the ground still laughing and clutching his stomach. Why are you laughing? Sasuke shouted angrily at Itachi. Itachi pointed at Sasuke's sons. Ha 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 ha. Pink. Pink haired. Ha ha ha. Pink haired Uchiha boys. Ah ha ha ha, he said, and he erupted into another fit of laughter. Sasuke's face turned a deep red in either anger or embarrassment, probably both. He growled at his brother, who was laughing like there was no tomorrow. Itachi was laughing so hard. His eyes were red and tears were forming in the corners of his eyes. Stop laughing, Itachi, Sasuke shouted again. Itachi, Itachi, Sasuke shouted as he jolted up in his bed. Looking around, he realized that he was his bedroom. Dream? It was a dream. He shivered, thinking about it. No, it wasn't a dream. It was a nightmare. Naruto quickly turned around and saw the person he had expected to see there. Hey, isn't it Black Zetsu? White Zetsu's clone said in a cheerful tone. Like White Zetsu, Black Zetsu had humanoid shape and Venus flytrap-like extensions on his one side. He also had short green hair and a single yellow eye, which lacked any visible sclerae or pupil, and mouth with jagged teeth. Like his name, he was completely black. Compared to White Zetsu, Black Zetsu was more serious and knowledgeable as he was the physical manifestation of Princess Kaguya Utsutsuki's will. He was her last creation. He was a real antagonist, a true culprit behind everything. He had spent countless years influencing the shinobi world in order to facilitate her revival. Idiot, Black Zetsu said to the clone in a deep voice, which was much different from the clone, go back to your work. Oh, well, the clone said in disappointment and he slowly sank into the ground. Where's your white half? Naruto said. As far as he knew, both Zetsu halves would rarely separate themselves from each other. On the mission that pain, Nagato has given us. Naruto nodded. He walked toward a stone chair and sat down on it with his arms crossed one leg placed over other. Why did you want to see me here? He asked. Black Zetsu sank into the ground and came out with a scroll in its hand. To give you this. He threw the scroll at Naruto. Naruto caught the scroll successfully. What is it? He examined the scroll. It was just a little scroll engraved with a familiar red swirl. The Uzumaki swirl? He looked up at Black Zetsu as he waited for him to say something, but he stayed quiet, so he asked again. What is in the scroll? Zetsu, probably something you would like. Naruto raised his eyebrow at it but opened the scroll. His eyes widened when he read the first few lines that had written in the scroll, and widened even further when he finished reading the scroll. He stared at smirking Black Zetsu with his eyes wide open. He asked, where did you get this information? The smirk on Black Zetsu's face widened further. I've been here since the beginning of Shinobi time, he said. I know more about the shinobi world than almost any other individual. If this is true then I want it, Naruto said as he rolled up the scroll. Send some white Zetsu's clones to find its exact location. Why aren't you going there personally? Zetsu's clones can mimic anyone they have been in contact with, right down to their chakra. 
One clone can easily take your place till you come back. My teleportation has some limitations. It hasn't reached mom's level yet. If I overuse it, I won't be able to use it until my Rin Charan gun has fully recharged, a process which takes a considerable amount of time, Naruto said. Also, Minato is monitoring me closely. We can't take that man lightly. After all, he's a leader of the most powerful shinobi village for nothing. So he'll wait for the right time and I am sure we'll get it soon. Very soon, Black Zetsu had seen the fight between Minato and Tobi. The fourth had wrecked the boy twice after figuring out the weakness in his space-time technique. Minato was truly a genius. He nodded his head. Yes, we can't underestimate that man. Anyway, tell me, Black Zetsu. How is your pet project? How is Akatsuki? Naruto asked, resting his chin on a fist. Have they started to capture tailed beasts yet? No, not yet. They are currently collecting funds for the organization. Hmm, interesting, Naruto said as his eyes shifted into unique dujutsu. Mind telling me everything about them? Black Zetsu told him everything. He didn't leave any tiny details. He even gave him information about every member with his or her powers and weakness. After getting all information from Black Zetsu, Naruto went into deep thought. Good, but let me know immediately if anything happens in the organization, he said. Black Zetsu gave him a toothful smile, showing his sharp teeth. Yes, I'll keep in touch. Oh, after becoming an official team, both Kakashi and Kushina started Team 7's training with basic chakra control exercises like tree climbing and water walking something every newly made Jinan should know how to do before moving toward more advanced stuff. Naruto had already known them before even becoming a Jinan and Sakura had a stunning natural talent for chakra control, so those exercises were easy to them. It could not say the same about Natsumi and Sasuke. It took them more than two weeks to reach a decent level because of their naturally large chakra reverse. When all students completed basics, Kakashi and Kushina moved on some advanced stuff, teamwork exercises and improving their students' individual skills. During the training sections with the team, Kushina had even managed to break fangirl inside of Sakura some degree, forcing the pink-haired girl to take her shinobi career seriously. The pink-haired girl had improved greatly after that, but much to Kushina's irritation, her obsession over Sasuke hadn't changed much. When Team 7 reached the level where both sensei wanted them to be, Kakashi and Kushina introduced their Jinan to the horror of D-rank missions, lowest classification missions. Those missions were usually assigned to Jinan team and weren't actual missions that posed almost no risk to the ninja's life. They dealt with tasks as simple as finding missing pets and weeding a garden. This frustrated all Jinans. The most of them would prefer to practice his or her own ninja skills rather than doing those stupid missions. They were no more than chores. Oh, it was just like any other day. Team 7 was waiting for their sensei and teammate to show up at the bridge that had been become their usual meeting spot since they had become an official team. Sasuke was leaning against the bridge railing while trying to stand as far away as possible from Sakura, who was trying to get closer to him. Even though she had become less fangirl of him, she was still annoying to him. The third member of their team, Natsumi, was watching the river that was flowing gracefully under the bridge. She was thinking about a way to convince her twin, who had yet to show up, to come back to the home. Suddenly. Dark smoke filled the half-bridge. Most surprising things was no one seemed to care about it. It gathered around a specific spot on the bridge, forming into a hooded figure. It was Naruto. Right after him, both Kushina and Kakashi showed up with a puff of smoke. Yo! Kakashi greeted in his usual manner. Hello, students, Kushina said, smiled. Today, we are going on a special D-rank mission. There is nothing special about D-rank missions. They all are just a bunch of chores. Naruto muttered under his breath. Except you, Naruto, Kakashi said, causing the blonde boy to look at him with a raised eyebrow. Minato-sensei wants to meet you. Much better than this chore, Naruto thought and he dispersed into the air in the form of black smoke. Why does Hokage-sama want to meet him? Sakura asked, looking at Kakashi. Sasuke and Natsumi turned their heads toward him, as they also wanted to know about it. In his usual lazy manner, Kakashi skillfully dodged that question. Nothing special. Oh, Naruto appeared outside the Hokage office and went in when he got permissions to enter. He saw current Hokage and former Hokage sitting with their two advisors. Welcome, Naruto-kun, Hiruzen greeted as soon as he saw the blonde boy. Naruto gave him a nod before he looked directly into Minato's eyes. What can I do for you, Hokage-sama? He asked. It's about your special talent, Koharu said, as she quickly came to the point. Naruto turned his head right where Koharu was sitting next to Homura. Which one? Adjusting his glasses, Homura answered, Your wood release. What about it? Naruto asked. Naruto didn't like those two. They had a bad habit of poking their noses into someone else. Yamato, 
former Hokage called, and a man with short brown hair and black, almond-shaped eyes entered the office. Naruto turned his head to watch the man. He wore a variation of the standard attire of a leaf nin with a flak jacket. In addition to that, he had a Hapori-style forehead protector that framed his face, similar to that of Doberama Senju. Naruto recognized the man. He was a prior root on code named Kaino. Naruto, meet Yamato, Hiruzen said. He is your new teacher. He can also use wood release like you. So they gave him another code name, Naruto thought while eyeing the man carefully who was doing the same as him. So you are the lone survivor of Snake Sonin's experiment on the first Hokage's DNA, he said, shocking everyone in the office. How did you know about this? It's one of the high class secrets of the village, Koharu asked, sounding demanding. Naruto scoffed. Ask your current Hokage who has a tendency to leave important documents on his study table. Everyone turned to Minato. The fourth's cheeks had turned red with embarrassment. Sorry. Just how many secrets you know? Homura asked, turning back to Naruto. Not too many, Naruto answered, but inside, he was thinking about something else. Ha, I know every deepest and darkest secret of Hidden Leaf Village, you old fools. Hiru's inside before looking at his successor's son again. Keep them secret, he said. Naruto nodded. I will keep them secret until a certain time. Yamato. Minato called to get Exonbu's attention before he gave him a nod. Yamato gave a deep bow before he grabbed Naruto's shoulder and they disappeared in a swirling of leaves. Hiruzen turned to his successor and said, I should have taught you the proper way to keep a secret before giving my position to you. Homura asked, What were you doing anyway when your son was reading S rank documents? Well, I was busy. Minato answered. There was a tiny blush on his cheeks, with Kushina. Hiruzen sweat dropped. Well, I cannot really blame him. It had also happened to me. Numerous times. Minato, Koharu said, getting current Hokage's attention. Are you sure he doesn't know the truth of the Uchiha clan's massacre? Minato shook his head. There's no document or file on that incident, so I'm sure Naruto doesn't know about it. How wrong Minato was. His son knew the truth behind the Uchiha clan massacre as well, even more than him. Oh, Yamato and Naruto appeared on a large ground. Naruto's violet eyes looked around to locate where he was. The place looked similar to the training ground 3, which Team 7 used, with some minor difference. However, he could tell this ground was one of restricted training grounds that Anbu used for their personal training. The safest training grounds to avoid unwanted eyes. Yamato turned and looked down at the blonde boy, well, Namek. Naruto. Naruto interrupted, call me just Naruto. Yamato stared at him, confused, but nodded anyway. Well. Naruto-san, first, show me what you can do, he said politically. Naruto nodded, and waved his hands up in less than a minute, he was standing on a branch of a fully grown-up tree. He jumped onto the ground and waited for Yamato's reaction. Your control over wood release is impressive, Yamato said as he was clearly impressed by his display. Wood release was very hard to control due to the sheer life force it had. Do you know any jutsu? He asked. Naruto smirked. Just because he had decided to hold back his real skill of using wood release didn't mean that he couldn't show up, a little. He began to make hand seals. It was a low-level version of his favorite move, wood release secret technique, nativity of a world of trees. He finished the last hand seal, wood style, giant forest jutsu. Small trees started popping out of the ground, so Yamato jumped out their way. In less than a minute, a small part of the training ground filled fully matured trees. Naruto fell on his knees and made a fake panting sound. This way he would get an excuse for showing such level of technique. Good, you are much better than I thought, Yamato said, clapping for him, as he walked toward him. But where did you learn this technique? Well, I sneaked into the Senju library to learn more about wood release, Naruto said. It was a half-truth. He didn't sneak into the Senju library, Zetsu did. How did you sneak inside the Senju library? Yamato asked. He had once tried to go inside the library, but it had turned out a complete failure because of a blood seal placed on the door. I'm from the Uzumaki clan. We are distant blood relatives of the Senju clan, Naruto answered. And the seal is designed by the first's wife, Mito Uzumaki. Yamato nodded. It made perfect sense. Oh, Minato was speaking with former Hokage and elders in his office. They were discussing on some vital matters when the door to the office flung open and Hokage's daughter walked in holding a cat followed by remaining Team 7 and their Jaun and Sensei. Both Sensei were looked perfectly fine, but the condition of all three Jaun weren't good. Their clothes were ragged with mud on them. There were also minor bruises and scratches on their faces. Daddy, Natsume shouted, holding the brown-colored cat up. The cat had lighter-colored markings on her head and amber-colored eyes with the red ribbon on her right ear. Her name was Tora, 
Infamous the demon cat Tora, the bane of every leaf ninja's existence. Tora had a bad habit of running away from her owner, who was none other than Madame Shijimi, the wife of the fire daimyo. I don't want this little monster's mission again, she added angrily, as both Sakura and Sasuke nodded their head in agreement. They had caught this little monster after searching her three hours, three fucking hours. Sasuke was debating himself, whenever, he should kill this monster before killing Itachi, or not. All adults in the room sweat dropped, seeing the weird behavior of the Janante in front of them. Minato opened his mouth to say something to her when suddenly Tora jumped from Natsumi's hand to the ground. Somehow, she had been able to free herself from Natsumi's grab. She ran toward the door, which was unfortunately opened. All three Janan looked at the scene with their mouth gaping open for a few seconds before Natsumi came out of her stupider and shouted, Catch that demon cat, but it was too late. Well, looks like we've to catch her again, Kushina said, hiding her giggle. Three Janan slumped back to the ground in both exhaustion and utter defeat. I do not like that cat, Sakura murmured. Just a minute later, Yamato came into the office, followed by Naruto, who was petting very familiar cat. Tora? Sakura said, recognizing the demon cat Tora in Naruto's hands. She seemed so peaceful in his hands. How are doing this? And how did catch her so easily? Natsumi asked. It took all of us nearly three hours to catch her. Well, because I'm good, Naruto answered. He patted the cat on the head. No one except adults in the office noticed the genjutsu that Naruto was using on Tora to calm her down. The way he was using his genjutsu skill clearly impressed all of them. All Zhenan, you are dismissed. Minato ordered. And Naruto, give Tora to Kakashi. Naruto did as Minato asked him to do and left with other Zhenan. When all Zhenan left the office, Minato performed some hand seals for privacy jutsu as the room glowed bluish for brief seconds before it turned back to normal. Give me report, Yamato, he said. Well, his control over wood release is impressive. Even I wasn't that good when I had first started to learn wood release, Yamato said. He was obviously impressed by Naruto's talent. The boy was really a genius. How long will it take him to learn to suppress the tail beast chakra? Koharu asked. I don't know. Maybe, one year or more. It depends on him, Yamato said. They began to discuss on Naruto and other important matters, without knowing one of White Zetsu's clones was watching them and hearing their conversation. Oh, inside his new secret hideout, Naruto was standing on top of an underground lake water. He dressed in his new ninja gear, a black zipperless hoodie with red lining a mesh armor with navy accents under an identical t-shirt with dark blue pants and matching shinobi sandals. Some white Zetsu's clones were arranging the place for him. Alone on the surface of the water, Naruto took a breath before he gracefully drew his ninjato blade in one smooth motion. He gave it a few practice swings and marveled at how quick and powerful it felt. He then began practicing his swordplay, performing swings and slashes against an imaginary opponent. He spent a few hours practicing to perfect his sword skills before he fell on his knee panting. Naruto looked down and saw his own reflection in the water. He looked paler than usual. His hair looked like it had been bleached and also had a streak of a light color that perfectly matched Kaguya's hair color. So mom's chakra is still affecting my body, he thought. You do know that Ninjadu is a gift from Kushina, right? Naruto stood up and turned his head to see Black Zetsu, in his merged form, emerge from the ground. Together, two Zetsu were easily distinguished by two large Venus flies trap-like extensions enveloping their head and upper body as a shell. It gave them a plant-like appearance. Of course he knows, White Zetsu said in defense of Naruto, but asking the next question, he ruined everything. You know, right? Idiot, Black Zetsu muttered. Yes, I know, Zetsu, Naruto said. Naruto looked down at the ninjato he was holding. Two days ago, he had found this beautiful sword wrapped in red silk cloth on his doorstep. He had named her Kurami, Dark Beauty. She was a beautiful ninjato with red-black hilt along with a pinch black dragon with red eyes coiling around the handle. Dragon's mouth wide opened with the blade shooting out of it. Its long tail wrapped around the handle, forming the Uzumaki swirl. The metal blade was so sharp it could be utilized to cut through anything. It had kanji of wool of fire I craved into it before but Naruto had changed it with kanji of peace and balance. I thought you hate your parents, Black Zetsu said. I hate them, but I don't let that hate blind me, Naruto said and he moved his ninjato up. And look at her. She is a high quality, custom made ninjato. You will need deep pockets to afford a weapon like her. You and I, we both know, I don't have that much money. Naruto walked toward the ground where White Zetsu's clones were arranging the place for him. They were doing work like placing weapons in their place, arranging scrolls, book etc. Naruto sheltered his sword and said, so I got the opportunity, and I grabbed it, couldn't let it slip away. Ah, a free weapon, White Zetsu said. Yes, you could say that. 
Naruto quickly ducked as a box filled with shuriken and kunai flew past over his head, almost touching his hair. Hey, watch out, you idiot, he cried at the white Zetsu's clone who had been responsible for it. He stood up, wiping all the dust off his clothes. Sorry. It slipped out of my hand, the clone apologized. He quickly sank into the ground and appeared next to the box. Naruto disappeared and reappeared far away from those stupid clones, next to the stone chair, as he didn't want a part of another accident. He took a place on it. Did you find it, Zetsu? He asked, placing his hand under his chin. Zetsu appeared in front of him, emerging from the ground, it was just his head only. Nothing, his black half said. But my clones are searching for it, his white half informed. Good, Naruto said. Keep me updated on progress. White Zetsu nodded before saying, Another thing, I think, you should know. Hidden Leaf is hosting Chunin exams this year, Black Zetsu added. And we've heard rumors that Cloud and Stone even missed are sending their candidates for exams. The Chunin exams, interesting, Naruto said as he went into deep thought. Oh, what's the distance of the target? Kushina asked through earphones that she had given to her students. Five meters, I'm ready anytime, Sasuke said. Same here. Sakura and Natsumi replied both at the same time. Me too, Kakashi said, giggled while reading his orange book. It was only chance to read his favorite book series without making Kushina angry. Whatever, Naruto replied last. The Team 7 had been assigned the Catch Tora mission, again. They were continuously doing D rank missions from past two weeks. All missions were nothing but chores, something civilians were too lazy to do. The Tora mission was one of the worst missions in all missions. Okay, Kushina said. Go. She gave them a signal and all of them cornered the target. Both Natsumi and Sasuke jumped into action and attempted to grab the cat. Tora tried to run away, but before she could, Naruto caught her tail and quickly placed a genjutsu on her. Got her, Naruto said. Ribbit on the left here. Are you sure this is the target, Tora? Kakashi asked without taking his eyes from the book. Yeah, I'm sure, Naruto said, patting the cat who was behaving well. Kakashi, put your book away. Kushina warned as soon as she saw the book in his hand. Kakashi nodded fearfully. He hurriedly put his book back in his pocket as he didn't want to die. Good job, Team 7. Lost Pet War a search mission, complete, Kushina said, smilingly brightly. Oh, no. Absolutely not, Natsumi shouted at her father. I want to do, you know, a more incredible mission. Find us a better one, Dada Bio. She quickly clapped her hands over her mouth as her cheeks instantly reddened with embarrassment. Kushina smiled at Minnie her while Minato sweat dropped. She is becoming more and more like her mother. Even, her verbal tick is the same as hers, he thought. Iruka stood up from his table. Natsumi, you should realize you're still a Jinan, he said, and he began to explain the mission system. Each request is written down on these lists. And divided into an A, B, C, D ranking based on difficulty, Iruka described briefly. The village is also divided based on skill. Starting with Hokage to the Jounin, then the Chunin and lastly the Jinan. The missions are then handed out by us at the top of the ninjas based on their abilities and if the duty is completed successfully we receive payment from the client. He took a deep breath. He was in his private world. You guys just recently became Jinan. D rank missions are perfect for you, he finished before looking around. A tick mark showed on his forehead. Both Naruto and Kakashi were reading books. Natsumi's back was facing him and she was telling Sasuke and Sakura about ramen that she had eaten yesterday. In short, no one was giving him attention. Iruka turned to Hokage and his jaw dropped on the floor. Kushina was particularly sitting on Minato's lap while her hands were around his neck. They were just talking about some random topics. Iruka did a fake cough to catch their attention. When he didn't get any result, he said, Hokage-sama. Kushina quickly stood up from Minato's lap. There was a slight blush on her cheeks while Minato adjusted himself properly before looking at Team 7. You understood him, right? He asked because he didn't. Not really, Naruto said as he closed his book and looked up. But, I've heard that Team 8 is on a C rank mission. Is this true, Iruka sensei? What? Natsumi and Sasuke shouted at the same time. They snapped their heads toward their former teacher, demanding an answer from him. Iruka sighed as he knew it was coming. Yes, it's true. Their mission is to escort the master bridge builder to the land of waves and protect him while he finishes building his bridge, he said. Naruto didn't have any hope that Team 8 would return back to the Hidden Leaf safely. His spies had told him about the land of waves condition, which was very bad. A gangster named Gato, who was ruling over that area, had hired the demon of the hidden mist Zabuzama Mochi to kill the bridge builder, who was in Team 8's protection. In short, the mission was not a simple C rank, 
its difficulty level was in between A and B. Team 8 wasn't a suitable team for that kind of mission. It wasn't a combat team, it was a tracking team. There were too many gaps between Zabuza and Kurunai's skills as well. Zabuza was in Anbu before joining the Seven Swordsmen of Mist where Kurunai was a newly made Jounin. She didn't have skills and experience to confront a ninja like him. Even if she did have them, she couldn't protect her students and client at the same time, not without sustaining any major injuries in the fight. Dad? We also want a C-rank mission, Natsumi said, nearly shouting to prove that she wouldn't take no for answer. Minato rubbed back of his head and thought something before he said, Well, I, Hokage-sama. An unknown Shaolin called urgently, as he ran into Hokage office. He gave a slight bow before saying, Teammate needs backup. Their Jounin sensei is injured. What? Minato said, but how? We don't know. The message is very short, so it would seem. Minato sighed and he turned to Team 7's both sensei. Are they ready for a higher class mission? Kushina and Kakashi looked at each other before looking at their students. Sasuke and Natsumi looked determined to do this mission while Sakura looked slightly nervous. They didn't blame her for that. It was going to be their first real mission. Then they turned to the final member of their team, Naruto, who looked bored like he didn't care about it. Kushina turned her back to her husband. They're ready, Minato-kun, she said proudly. Minato gave them a small smile and said, Okay, Team 7. You are going to the Land of Waves as a backup for Team 8. Natsumi started to cheer, even Sasuke had a small smile on his lips. Sakura was still nervous. And Naruto, he wasn't paying any attention. All right, Team 7, meet us at the Hidden Leaf Gate in two hours, Kakashi said. Oh, Naruto finished packing all the essentials he'd need during the mission and finally strapped an Anjato onto his back. Are you going to visit the site? Black Zetsu asked. Maybe, Naruto answered. Walking toward the exit. Let me know if you need any help, Black Zetsu said before sinking into the wooden flooring. Naruto walked out of his apartment and locked the door, securing it with seals. He turned around, leapt off his balcony and landed on the second story roof. He then started to jump from rooftop to rooftop, quickly heading toward the hidden leaf gate. Oh, Naruto reached the gate first. He leaned against a wall to wait for others show up. In a puff of smoke, Kakashi arrived before everyone could show up. Naruto raised his eyebrow. You've come before the time? He said. Hey, I'm not always late, Kakashi said. Naruto gave him a deadpan look. Okay, I've come late to our meetings and training sections many times and I admit, I'm not exactly the most punctual person, but, I'm not the worst. There are a lot of people worse than me in that department. Naruto shook his head and took out a book from his pouch. Whatever helps you sleep at night, Kakashi-sensei he said. Kakashi sighed, knowing there was no way he could win this argument. He then followed Naruto's example as he pulled out his Icha Icha book and started reading. A minute later, Sasuke showed up, his number one fangirl, Sakura, following shortly behind him. Both of them wore their regular ninja clothes. In addition, they had backpacks on their backs to store their extra ninja supply and essential things they'd need during the mission. On the way, Sakura saw that Kakashi was already there. He was standing beside Naruto and reading an orange book. Kakashi-sensei, you are on time? She asked. Kakashi sweat dropped. Is my reputation really that bad? There was a puff of smoke, and Kushina and Natsumi appeared next to Sasuke. Kakashi quickly hid his book into his flak jacket before turning to them. Kushina was in her as usual gown in uniform and Natsumi dressed in her new gear, a yellow blouse with a red shirt underneath that exposed her navel, a black skirt thigh-length fishnet stockings and sandals with her red ninjato strap on her back. So, are you ready? Kushina asked her students. She got nods from them. Let's go. They left the village and started their journey toward the land of waves. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.